Guess what, everybody? I remembered this time. Spoilers ahead. If you haven't seen the films, probably watch them. Or don't. Just listen Beautiful to us talk film. about it. So, <laughs> you, hey, what, everyone. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. wait. No, what, 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 what? We're starting. This is going to be the beginning. This ah, is yes, be the of beginning. course. I'm the host, so... Jake is the please. host. Wait, I want to do mine, too. Did you disappear? What happened? Oh, I guess my mic didn't catch it. I was it's okay untapping my beer. Ah, uh, all so good. guys. Uh, welcome. Uh, welcome. Welcome. Everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Here welcome I am. To twofoldpodcast.com. What's right up, here, my boys? Right now, I'm the host. Yay! Which means that um, we're just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna hijack the show. That sounds good. Sounds great. It's gonna, it's gonna be nice. Um, <laughs> so just con- confirming to yourself. Sounds good. Yes. What's going on? What's going on, everyone? Hey. What's going on in the listeners' lives? We can't hear them. So what's going on in your <laughs> guys' lives? So, so we're just gonna ignore them. No. You, you, exactly. People, people, you can write to us. What's going on in your life? We We'd love to hear hear you what you write. But the thing definitely, is that we don't get anything. So it'd be awesome. That'd be so cool, guys. Would love we're to just get some here. <laughs> we're just sitting in, is in deep listening? space. I don't, I don't know. know. We're sitting not. here in our underpants. No. Just, yeah. I don't know. I got my listening. pajama pants. I mean, here's the thing, right? Like, I'm pretty sure no one's listening, but there's only one way to find out. <laughs> what, no one at all? Listen, there's only one way to Aww. find out. Uh, you got to send us a message. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, we don't know if you exist. Do you remember last Remember last uh, two weeks episode? Tommy Lee Jones was out looking for intelligent life out there in the universe. Exactly. We, we don't want to be like Tommy Lee Jones. Okay, um, right. This is what I wanted to do first. Before we begin, I wanted to try this beer I got, because it sounds interesting. All right, what's the beer, my brother? Well, I have a, a brewery that Tim also had previously on this podcast. Mm. Ooh. The Garden Brewery. Oh, yes. <laughs> Local boys. Which, listen to this. The owner of the Garden Brewery is British. Oh, oh well. Who knew? So so wait, is it like his idea or he's just the owner, like businessman? I uh, think he I think started it. Yeah. I don't know what he's doing here though. He's an expat. Sure. expat. No, cheap labor. <laughs> <laughs> just just <laughs> you, you make beer for me. Yes. You clots. You make beer for me. And I become but, famous. But that's interesting. I mean I it didn't is, know that it at is. All. we didn't know that, did we? No, I learned about that recently. And it seems like they like to make a little bit more interesting flavors, you know, compared to other, I think, companies here. Oh, yeah. When we were... It's really good, like, it's balanced, I think. Well, as far as, like, a, a, any flavor I had, it was... It, it, it wasn't too wonky, or, or was it under-flavored? It was just, just right. I think they're pretty yeah. solid. They're pretty solid. I, I totally agree. I think Garden Brewery has a very good balance of different flavors. And I remember when Jake and I went to the actual brewery, uh, oh, one you time. did. We did, yes. yeah. And we ordered what they had was a milkshake one, a milkshake mm-hmm. IPA, I guess. I don't know. Yes, the milkshake IPA. Yeah, it was so good. I couldn't believe it, and I wish they still had it, but they don't. I guess so listen, we'll come back as a special. So, what do you have, Jake? I have a chocolate and peanut butter stout. <gasps> Whoa! I never had peanut butter, I chocolate, and, and peanut butter. So, does it have? Can you look at the ingredients? Does it have actual peanuts in it, or is it just? Well, the let's first read the slogan. Aftertaste. Okay, let's see. the description: dark, creamy, and decadent, with notes of <laughs> peanut butter, caramel, and chocolate. Six point nine percent ABV. Ooh. I don't know what ABV means. Alcohol bar beverage. Beverage. So you said, does it have what? Does it have actual? Because some. Because here you think you have. You have extra flavors of beer, right? Sometimes you get it with the roast and with the process. So you're just using your hops and, you know, and, and it just can't come, you know, the way you process it. That's how you get right. the flavors. Right, you're saying they add the flavors. They, yes, they add the flavors uh, post, you know. So I'm just wondering what, which be, one is it. Could be. You, you can look at the back and it says, you know, peanuts are in there. Then obviously it says put, peanut butter. It's in one of these. Well, then the peanut butter is in there. They, they All right, ready, pop guys? It in there. Ready? Yeah. ready? All right, I'm ready. ready. Okay. Drink it. Drink it. Glug, 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 glug. I, oh, I wish I would have play tasted more of the peanut butter. <laughs> 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 well, take some peanut butter, put it in there, and just like mix it up. It's actually a nice stout. 
I'm, I'm, I'm yum, just yum, not yum. getting the peanut butter. Oh, that's too bad. Well, anyway, <laughs> well, um, <laughs> I'll tell you what I have. What it's really have? boring. Again, I'm the boring guy. Um, I have f- this wonderful beer. It's an IPA. No, it's not. It's a it's a hoppy lager, and it's called Baltazar. Balt. <gasps> Baltazar. Did Bal- you guys watch Baltazar? Baltazar. Ever as a kid? Mm, Baltazar. Really. Yeah, I did when did I was you? really really young. It was on it's a pretty TV. cool cartoon in Croatia. Yeah, he's an inventor. That's right. That's the picture on the um, on the bottle. It's from Mid um, Pivovara Medved Medvedgrad, which is uh, yes. a Zagreb thing because there's a fortress up there in the mountains, in the hills, in the forest. It's called Medvedgrad. It used to be a yeah. medieval town, medieval fortified city. Tell, tell our listeners what that means. Oh, Medvedgrad? Well, Medved, I don't know if you know, but it's very similar to other Slavic languages, which means bear. And Grad, also in different Slavic languages, means city or town. It was started so, by a group of bears who descended down from the mountain. <laughs> and, and they, they said, no. Guys, guys, update, update. They wanted to start <laughs> brews. I'm feeling, <laughs> I'm feeling the peanut butter. Oh, oh no in way! The aftertaste, <laughs> the re- like, regurgitation it's in my mouth. Is crazy. Mm, it's cool. I like it. I like it. Imagine that, like, if if you had a beer that you taste one thing when you drink it, and when you burp, you taste a different thing. It's like I've, ha- I've bur- had that before. Not beer, the, but drinks. But the burp, the, it's like not an aftertaste, but it's a burp taste. We should make but a you, beer like that <laughs> with a burp called... taste of m- midsummer flowers. But Tim, have you ever <laughs> had like um, where you've eaten something and then when you burp, you? <laughs> Taste oh, I hate. Again. I I don't. <laughs> yeah, this is this become know. really disgusting. I don't know why I brought this up. I apologize. This is why it's, this interesting. Is gross. I, it's I interesting. I guess burps are generally just like a. Well, so are farts and poop. Okay, <laughs> caca. Exactly. So, <laughs> Phil, how's the beer? The beer is great. I like Baltazar beer, and to be honest, Tim, you know that the picture is Baltazar himself, but just rendered in a realistic <gasps> way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's right. Like a, it's like a painting yeah. of Baltazar. Because Baltazar yeah. was, what was that, like a 60s cartoon? Yeah, yeah, the something 60s? in the 60s. It was done by Zagreb Film, I think it's called. Um, yeah, that was like that ba- ba- animation ba- studio. A very fine establishment. I don't know about their legacy today, but they used to be very prolific. Well, they turned into... Back in the day. Crow team yeah. that made Serious Sam. No, you're serious? <laughs> no, <laughs> that that make, you know, <laughs> They went from Baltazar and then like, let's make video games. <laughs> <laughs> about dudes... Running w- without heads. <laughs> yeah. Are they still making Serious Sam? Who knows? I think oh, so. I think there was are, a Serious yeah. Sam recently. Yeah. I think they did a reissue. They did a the VR games. one. <laughs> what? I played what? it. I played it at. When, remember, Jake and I went to this um, convention in uh, Croatia and Zagreb. They have like a video game convention. It's nothing mm-hmm. too huge. Um, but of course, Crow Team is there because they're in Croatia. So they bring the their stars. Serious Sam stuff, you know? They brought the entire generations of Serious Sam games. So you could play them on the, you know, on the regular PC from 2001, and you can play the ne- next one. And they also brought in their. Oculus Rift, like, really? Yeah, um, <clears throat> VR version. And do you I, move or you just stay in like in the middle and just shoot? You things? stay in the middle. That's a good question. And shoot things, but that I makes sense because like Serious Sam is pretty just like shoot. They should make unserious <laughs> Sam. What? Like funny make, Sam? Uh, no, just just <laughs> something else. Oh, just like a different game? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, but like I'm saying, like make Serious Sam, but make it like a different style. You know, I think they did like, that already. Um, you just have okay. to go and check. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. So, me, I got uh, another another brewery, which I didn't have before. Um, I am trying really hard to find out the name of it, because this uh, this this... Oh, I think I found it. Magic Rock Brewing. Magic Rock? Magic wow. Rock Brewing. From... from 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 ah just uk just uk just general uk just uk just general uk um and th- what i have the first beer is a it's really cool covers it's very geometric very are, they, are they based looking. in uk city uk it's the city of uk exactly <laughs> yeah, the, the, um, the cans look amazing the cans look great they have I, you know what i like about them they have black tops of the can you know they're not oh i like the black tops mm. yeah looks pretty cool it does look um, pretty deluxe this one's called high wire grapefruit Mm-hmm. It's a grapefruit pale ale. 
and um, it's pretty disgusting. <laughs> oh, no, <man. laughs> no, no, it's okay. No, that's a, that's a, sorry, that's an overstatement. But it's not very nice. It's I I I forgot. Great food is weird. Well, I, for I, our listeners, Tim has a special next beer, which I it's know true. what it is, but you don't. You don't know. Um, hopefully that will redeem it. I just it's it's not the problem with the beer. I think it's just I forgot grapefruit. I don't like it for some reason. This Grapefruit's happens the best. Do you have this when you read something and you read it wrong? And for some reason in my head, I thought I had a pineapple pale ale. <laughs> I mean, it sometimes happens, but yeah. not usually. So but you it's want okay. pineapple and you got grapefruit. Yeah. You know, grapefruit has that like bitter Good taste. Yeah. In this, and it's, it's mixed Wonderful. with a beer. It's like, it's, it's, it's not a great cup. Maybe, maybe grapefruit enthusiasts well, would love it. We talked about them and we talked about the Radlers. <laughs> the grapefruit right. Radlers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We did. So maybe something similar. You yeah. know, like that tells you about the, you know grapefruit. Like, what, what a name for fruit this is. You have to you have to make sure it's a fu- fruit, and then you kind of like it's sort of like grape. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, because you can't say grape. It's a grapefruit fruit, right? Because it's like an a- ATM right. machine. But you know, you know? it's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, it is. I don't understand why. Let's say here in if you just say call... it's a grape, then people think it's a grape. So you have to say it's a grapefruit. They call it here grape, like. G R E J P. Great. Well, because they have Grozdy, right? Yeah. In well, Slovak, Hrozno. But if what's, you go, what's, what's grapefruit in Slovak? I think just called a grape as well. Right? Interesting. I think so, yeah. But, and I, uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll ask him. Uh, when she, but when in she English, around. grapefruit. <laughs> the fruit of the grape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so when, when grape of the gardener makes a fruit, and it's a grapefruit. Interesting, interesting Mr. topics. Mr. Grape. Very interesting topic. This is my show. I love this. This is going yeah. so well. <laughs> this is going so smooth. Like I a like grape it. It's juice going great. and beer. Um, so what are you guys up to <laughs> other than grapefruits and beers? Uh, well, I can talk about... I can talk about... I, I had a different uh, cinema experience going to see this first movie. That's great. Oh, let's really? Just, let's just start with that. Yeah, yeah. Well, here's the thing. So so since I'm a papa... Um, You're a papa? I get to, I'm a papa. Uh, oh, a papa. baby turned six months yesterday. Oh, half a year. She's looking half very beautiful. Um, and uh, so, so uh, I would go see movies like the latest screening. It's usually around nine ish, nine, nine ten, or before like eight thirty, eight forty. Yeah. And the best thing about that was, and it was usually during the week, right? So we help with the bath, baby goes to sleep, I clean up everything, and then then I'll go see the movie for the podcast. That filthy baby. Every movie so far I went every two weeks is just me and maybe two or three. three people. <laughs> and the best thing about that oh, is man. I walk up and it's like it's already like playing the movie. I walk up to the counter and I'm like, one ticket for this movie. Ladies turns the screen. It's like, where do you want to sit? And I just point with my finger in the oh, middle because no one's there. So you buy the ticket at the desk. Because, yeah, because no, one, no one's going to these screenings. Oh, like, okay. Makes sense. Because middle of the week and it's like already like nine. So I go, I point on the middle of the screen. She's like, great, you should take it. <laughs> I waltz in, the commercials have played and the trailers have played. I plop my butt down, movie starts, enjoy my time, you know? <laughs> it's awesome. Good time. That's great. <clears throat> now, since Phil is leaving us to Japan. I am going oh, to Japan. True. That's right. This is my last episode until sun. whenever. Rising sun. Yeah. <laughs> the land of the sun. <laughs> the land of the sun. The, the so, sun people. Who... I'm not a Japanese expert. Actually, yeah, we watch a lot of Japanology. So That's right, I'm... Jacob. You should you should know. You know a lot. And if you don't know a lot, watch this video. Oh, shit, what's the guy's name? The History of Japan. History of Japan. Oh, yeah. It's so what's funny. It? Oh, Bill Wirtz. Yeah, Bill Wirtz. Just watch it. Bill Wirtz. You'll learn a lot and you will love it. Anyway. So, um, so, so I go to get, so we were kind of like figuring out where we're going to record and everything. So we didn't have time and I was going to go, um, I think it was a Saturday. Yes. It was definitely a Saturday, right? Yeah. Yeah. I remember um, when you messaged sure. us. And, and it was like, oh, I'll go Saturday. And, um, uh, I was like, we, we helped with the, uh, with the bath and everything. I'm like, I'm going to go earlier because, you know, I'm kind of feeling sickish. So I want to go to a late screening. So I was going to a screen that was like 730, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I come yeah. up and, and, I, and, and as you remember, I bought my tickets just going up and go see my movie. I come to the cinema and I, and it, the whole mall is under reconstruction, right? So you, you can only get up to the second floor through this one, uh, right? just one elevator. So I go up to the elevator, you could walk through construction, peep in, the doors open, right? 
And okay. there's a line starting from the elevator all the oh, way to the cinema. No, <laughs> it's the peeps. And the I'm peeps. like, and I was like pretty late because I was like, I, I'm used to the going, peeper. you know, when the when the when the trailers out. I'm like, there's there's like so many people, and I'm like, oh my god, all these people are going to see the Joker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh poop. Like, what am I gonna do? I like, I don't want to go back. And then and then I remembered. They install little machines on the side so you can buy a ticket. Kiosks. And buy a ticket and print it out and pay with your card, Apple Pay, and <gasps> just go, right? And Dude. I look and no one's there. <laughs> What's uh, going on? Old there. school, right? Because they're old school because they don't know. And even though our ah. cinema changed it so you can only pay with cash when you go up to the people. They're still going. And there's still like mountain, there's like a line, there's like... That's like 60, so 70 people. So Don't just, you yeah. feel proud of yourself? I did. It was like, oh. so I sneaked over there, bought my ticket, <laughs> waltz to the, you know, to the entrance dun, and just dun, pay. Dun, dun, but dun, the funny dun, thing dun, is dun. I did that and you could see people's head turning and like, what is he doing there? And then, and then I walked with the ticket <laughs> and, and heads are following me as I go into the cinema and like, dun, 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 I look dun, dun, back dun, dun. and there's like 30 people just like <laughs> running to the automated wow. machines. It was that awesome. You could ridiculous. pick your seat and everything. That and I looked great. At, and I looked at the map of the seats, and I think there were like six seats empty. But, the, you know, the sad thing is that since my wife, she has to stay because baby still feeds and everything. So she's a night. Yeah. So we can't go together in movies, which we can't wait to go again like we used to <laughs> back in the day. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was just me by myself. And the only upside of that is I looked at the map of all the seats, all full, maybe like a few spots in the first row, maybe like two, three in the back and some dispersed. Mm -hmm. Straight dab in the middle, one space empty. <laughs> I'm just like, uh, boop, I'll have this one. Thank you. That's so very good. Very lucky. And there's so lucky many boy. people. And I'm really wondering, is this because of Heath Ledger's Joker? What's going on? You like, know, uh, I was going to ask this. this myself. Yeah. Go on, Jake. No, go, it's go your on. Show. You have more, you have, no, it's good. I, I permit you. <laughs> no, ah, okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, it's funny because we had the same experience. Um, a huge marketing campaign here in Croatia. Like, I don't know. Like, I watch YouTube when I do drawings and stuff, mm -hmm. so I always have it on. Joker trailers so often before the movie came out. Like, really? Ridiculous mm -hmm. amount. Um, posters Every everywhere, posters on the streets. The only That's time crazy. that really happens is for like It, which is another one that everybody wanted to watch. I guess people, people are love fans clowns. of horror movies. Or, <laughs> I think I saw the Joker <laughs> trailer like maybe four or four times. Something yeah, like that. four or five times every time we went to see movies in the theater. I think as far back as uh, Russell the, Hobbs. The podcast. I the mean, podcast yeah, Hobbs right. and Shaw. Well, I missed the, I missed the trailers in, in the cinema, so I don't know. Uh, but there wasn't that many posters or anything i really i thought it's gonna be like another like an ad astro no one's gonna be there no one's gonna care it's like no no yeah, everybody movie. everybody i don't know why i think it's just because i'm it's gotta I'm be like, heath ledger it's gotta be do you remember do you remember 2008 yeah, everyone yeah. went mm -hmm. mental yes over that joker it was mental like emo kids were crazy over it everyone screensavers Everyone background with the joke. Yeah, you know, you remember the something though. <laughs> you remember the frosted glass and when he's doing the smile. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, so yeah, serious. Yeah. Like everyone did. Either people with oh, tattoos, man. people That's dressing true. up. Like back in the day was MySpace. Remember, and like so many dudes, <sighs> like their MySpace picture was them like with the Joker makeup. <laughs> yeah yeah oh man that's like 11 i years think ago. you're on to something though because maybe what happened was that the joker from batman the dark knight uh was like a sort of it created its own thing where people weren't necessarily following batman per se oh shit this whole uh, play the theme song god damn it ah thank you for helping me <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, there it goes. Oh. theme See, song. This is great. I can be my the heart, host, and you guys can. We can almost help missed me. it. Perfect. You know, I thought Perfect. What happened was, oh shit, not recording. And I was like, oh great, <laughs> that's gonna be fun. That would be so bad. Listen, so I wanted sad. to say that you're onto something because maybe the Joker was sort of like an offshoot, where people started to look at him just as the character, not really connected to Batman, and then that created the whole you know interest over time. That's my thinking. Don't you think that people like the Joker because of Heath Ledger and then that created its own kind of character and people are interested? Because that's why they also had the Joker with the Jay Leno, whatever his name was. 
What? Did, 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 uh, not Jay Leno. <laughs> <laughs> what? Jared Leto. That's exactly him. <laughs> Jay, Leto. Jay Leno because Imagine I can't remember the his name. With, J- with Jay Leno. <laughs> <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? Like the, everyone's like loving yeah. the Joker. I, I don't know. So serious. Ah. <laughs> hey, why so hey. serious? <laughs> what? Um, <laughs> um, well, it's actually a pretty good beer. Chocolate. Okay, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say. Um, yeah, go on. Maybe I'm stereotyping, but I feel like some. I don't know these kind of European, Eastern Europe places. They love being edgy. They like edgy, the edgy stuff. What do you I say, edge lords? Yeah, edge lords. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, <laughs> they love edging. No, so. yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, they probably do. Probably, <laughs> maybe some of them. So our <laughs> uh, let's let's tell you before we go into the movie. Um, let's just say that our theater no, we're, was we're, full of. We're going to go oh, no. into go the on, movie. We're going to blend into the movie. Everything is... This is my right, show. Let's do we're it. Using this is your... blending modes. We're oh. using all sorts we're not, of... We're not... We're not... We're not... Okay, we're going straight green. All over. right, master. Go, master. Episode. Let's go. You are <laughs> the master. Uh, well, what do you want to say, J- uh, Philip? Your, 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 yeah. your theater what? Our theater was full of teenagers. Edging. <laughs> Edgy teenagers. <laughs> did you... Uh, how, of, how far from the opening did you go see it? Like, do you know what's, how far from the period? Because I think um, there was a lot of, like, peer recommendations. I think a lot of people who know the podcast and they were, like, asking my wife, like, their, her co-workers from work, like, oh, what are they going to go see? And they're like, I go see Joker. Oh, yeah, I saw it. Best movie of the year. You know, kind of like. Right, right. Talk. So I think that kind of, there was a word of mouth mm-hmm. going on. Phil, Phil, what you going? I just wanted to say that just, I think that there's something about the i mean i guess this was established in the dark knight where it's like introduce a little anarchy right you got the anarchy thing going and like the fact that he, you know the joker is the the man of chaos who creates unrest and um mm-hmm. and oh, you like s- starts things and like the so i think that's what that? i think i think i think the like i mean there's so many of them in this movie in this movie <laughs> sorry in this movie theater um, <laughs> in this movie, I yeah, this is so many teenagers. <laughs> that whole bit and the uh, I don't know. I think that there's something about it that 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 makes the youth. Uh, That's interesting. Well, I don't know because the youth that went to your cinema probably were like what 2008, 11 years ago. They were kids. Yeah, <gasps> maybe that's what they inspired by him. Five years ago, <laughs> but it, it was like a tr- cultural zeitgeist. So I think it's still in the culture. You know, this this this. The hypening of of which the was hypening. obviously was it was you know one of the best That's a Jokers. Good film name the hypening um <laughs> the hypening Jokers and, and it's fully understandable I think to me even personally like that was the best part of that movie the rest was just like eh, of you know the Dark Knight it was heat light do you know what we should do guys mm. we should one time do video chat that would be cool that'd be fun no, I, yeah. I want to do it because then we don't like jump into each other's yeah because I'm sentences. thinking like you know I can't yeah. see you guys I want I would like to look into your eyes. That's true. <laughs> as, as I speak, as I'm like sitting here, I'm looking at this bookshelf, and it's just like I'm looking at these books, and it's like, what a dynamic, you know, view. Like just nothing, just books. Just close and your shelf. eyes and imagine our faces. Okay, okay, uh, that's a good idea. I did that once in our podcast. <laughs> no, but then it, you're gonna fall asleep great. like that last no, time. I'm <laughs> sitting the down. Podcast. I'm sitting down. <laughs> so, 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 <laughs> Jacob had this yeah. amazing idea. <laughs> oh, one, 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 one it's a good podcast. Laugh, actually. Thanks. That's, that's a no. joke laugh. Well, there's two Jacob laughs. Phoenix. Is, uh, Phoenix. His laugh laughs. is great. He has three laughs, by the way, in this. We, we'll, we'll get into the nitty gritty, right. but remember that. He has three laughs. But no. I'm closing, I'm closing was, my eyes. He was like, uh, we did this one podcast, and Jacob's like, I'm a genius. I don't feel comfortable <laughs> seating, sitting. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to record this podcast laying down. So, <laughs> Yeah, I remember. He lay down on the that bed. That's an awesome episode. <laughs> and, then, and then he put the microphone stand over his head. And it's like, this is so yeah. great. I'm so comfortable. 15 minutes, he's like, guys, I'm falling asleep. I can't be like this anymore. <laughs> is that true? Then was I falling asleep? Yeah. yeah. I, I videoed. I recorded you and I sent it to Tim and I showed him what you... What, that was a kind of episode. stupid we, contortion. We you talked were about performing. some good stuff, some some gold material. Okay, yeah, fried oh, yeah, gold. Well, speaking of which, we <laughs> which <laughs> well, that was a, that was an unintended pun, but it is October and it is Halloween time, oh, and we don't is. have a Halloween theme. That's you know, awesome. I blame it on these two guys because they're cowards. What? They would never see a, a scary movie, but I promise, I promise, I I'm going to. There were no gonna scary tell. movies. I'm going to cheat. You can I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to do. Just find a way for next October. To get a scary movie in there, it's going to be a scary. Episode. You can squarely <laughs> blame okay. it on me. I take full responsibility <laughs> for being a coward. 
<laughs> but <laughs> yes. but uh, find we can find some old cool episodes, some Halloween specials from the olden days of the. Can we watch? Podcasts. How about this? How about we do like the classic monster movies? That's good. Those are horror movies. I guess. Sure. Yeah. You know, okay. I love good. It. It's like it's you know it's like a safe bet for little Jake. Pull the strings, little Jake. No, Pull the string. <laughs> So, oh, Philip, to, to add yeah. on what you were saying about the teenagers, you know, I was really concerned when we walked into the theater and we sat down, yeah. and in front of us were a ravaging pack of wolves. You know, they, were, <laughs> they were teenagers. And uh, I was worried. You know, I was thinking, oh my goodness, if this is teenagers, they are going to. Someone's going to pull out a gun and shoot everybody. All how to react to a film like this or to respond to a film yeah, like this and yeah. to respect a movie like this. Because teenagers that age, a lot of them, they don't know how to respect movies. They, they go to movies just to mess around and and not at all. They're, like for them, the movie doesn't matter. Joke with their matter. friends. It's impress just their like friends. A template. Yeah. Imp- yeah, impress their friends. Just impress their you friends. That's better. And see something just because you want to go out. Yeah, they shouldn't belong in theaters. So we um, should have a special out. screening. Like Get you know out. how there's like an age barrier, yes. like. At, like you can't see a movie maybe if you're 18 over like what right so they should do like you can't see the movie <laughs> no yeah. way there, there could be a screening process of like for instance some oh, until a 18 right so, no like this what? screening is only for people from 12 to 18 right and if you're older well, you get you get your own oh, space to that's watch movies perfect that would be, That'd nice. be awesome they can go that, wilder. They can they all like make out together and and laugh and throw popcorn at each other and 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 make jokes but let them be there, you know, just by themselves. Let yeah, them fight. Agree, yeah. you know, <laughs> exactly. You do, let them fight. Best Godzilla movie ever made. <laughs> We're talking about robot robots, so I'm just going to pretend I hear you normally for the audience. Um, during the opening shot of the movie where Joaquin Phoenix's character, Arthur, is laughing, and you can tell something's not right, something's uneasy, something's off. And the stupid kids were laughing at this. Oh, and that yeah? concerned me so much because I was thinking, my goodness, like usually I don't get super annoyed because I don't usually see that many teenagers or interact with them. But this was just, I was more like, if it's going to be the whole movie, I won't be able to watch the movie normally, but I will be at a very yeah, uneasy yeah. state of an audience inappropriately reacting to a film. I don't care if you do that, but leave the cinema. Go away. Luckily, they stopped after like. I 10 know. Minutes. I totally agree. So, yeah, it seems like they were their attention was caught by the film. That's really good. I like that. Like they're, they're, that happened a few times before. Like they start joking and trying to be show offy and everything, and then the movie's way too good. They just shut up and watch. I yeah. hope that's the truth. My friend, and, I do. <clears throat> and I don't want to be the host, but with that in mind, what did you think of the movie? Well, I wanted to see, Ooh. like, um, <laughs> my first question is Jake. that, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I'm hosting. Oh, you, 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 you shut down his hosting? Yeah, sh- shut him down. Sorry, shut me down. No, I'm not shutting down, Phil. I'm just saying that. Shut uh, me down. We're going to go a different way. Take Jake. me away. So first of all, uh, I have one more thing left to say, and then I'll let you guys talk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you, Tim, said about a word of mouth, stuff like that with the Joker, right? And what I noticed was that I remember reading on like, I think it was Twitter or something before the movie came out. It was like a pre, because I don't read much about movies right before you go see them. And one of the articles was like, the title was like, the hype around the Joker is just that hype. And then I didn't read the article, but I was thinking like, oh, I was like, maybe it's going to be one of those movies. It's just purely hyped. And yeah. Um, that was my impression going that that was my anecdote where do you so, see this article i i don't remember it, it was one article and so that and that was local I, or no no no, no, no. no. it was international <laughs> <laughs> and so transatlantic and, and Trans- so, so i based Trans- all, my, all my opinions on that one article that i didn't even read and thought that this is the opinion of everyone i don't know what i no, do no, is I'm i joking. i don't know like i do have um expectations but these days, I've never had the expectations um, dictate how I felt about a movie because I'll be honest, I did not look forward to watch Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I was like, oh, it's three hours. It's in the 70, 60s. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want to see this. <laughs> you know, and I don't like Quentin Tarantino. 
but I saw it and I really enjoyed it. So that's that's, that's, that's good. I agree that's with that. Turned to one eighty. So that's what I want. What I even wanted to talk to you guys about, but we can talk about this some sometime later. But it's, it, I think, based what I know about you, and I could be wrong, but I think since we started this podcast, you are not going to the cinema to see movies you would usually see before this. No, you'd you would see the blockies and no, yeah. that's wrong. Like a Marvel movie that's and stuff wrong. like that's wrong. Is it wrong? Yes. Or maybe I'm, I'm talking about Phil here only. I don't know. Well, I mean, yeah, yes. Oh, thanks for putting that into my mouth. <laughs> No, but like it just, just to, like even for the older podcast, we would go see the, you know the Hobbit, and we would all go see the right. new Star Wars. Well, let me be honest. I think like I really haven't gone that much to the cinema, like overall in general. Uh-huh. But that's it is what true. I wanted to say too. It is true that the movies we did go to see in the cinema were the blockbusts. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying I didn't go see that. I did see the go the block yeah. as well, but I went to see like movies that I also was interested that in, you know. That maybe doesn't really make sense to go see nowadays. Like people's general opinion is like, oh, go see the big blocks and then wait for the DVDs and the streams for the for the small movies. But it was really nice that we get we get to go see like even smaller oh, yeah. movies on the cinema. It's, it's, it's yeah. an experience. So it's great. Um, I want to say we got to get into the movie now, and it's time. It's 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 it, time. <laughs> it is time. It is time. So listen, the uh, Joker. We're gonna, go about, we're gonna go about this totally differently since I'm the host and I'm just oh, yeah. so excited You're control. about this. Your boss. And this is how we're gonna do it, right? Um, we're going to go, uh, I'm going to ask each of you a, qu- a question. <laughs> okay, <laughs> ringleader. Okay, so the question I mean, is I'm this. excited, I'm excited. Yeah, yeah, this is, you're just going to blow your mind. So we're going to start with you, Tim. Okay, I'm ready. Tell me, uh, what is something about this movie? No, don't, no, let me rephrase that. <laughs> what, what is Starting up something in the film that you liked most or connected to most? That's the first question. Mm-hmm. And second, uh, what is something in the film that um, you you didn't connect to so much? Yes. Okay. That's my question. Okay. So, so, so I guess uh, connecting, I think I didn't have a personal connection because I don't mm-hmm. have much experience at such things. I never lived in a crazy... Well, I lived in Belfast, <laughs> but that's a different city. Nor do I have, True. you know, did I have some sort of like... Uh, mental health issues or did I have anyone in my life with that so I, it's a it's a strictly observer's kind of point of view but what I, I definitely what I appreciated and I think what is the strongest point of this movie is Joaquin Phoenix performance I think there are some good things some really great things and some just okay things about this movie but I think he kind of puts it all together I, I think you know and and I think as far as like his body mm-hmm. movement and the way he talks and just how he portrays emotion is amazing. But what I really liked about his performance was talking about earlier, the three laughs. Mm-hmm. So, so in this movie, the, the character of Joker, he has a, uh, what's it called? Uh, this condition, condition, condition that, um, he <laughs>, laughs, <laughs>, he, he laughs uncontrollably when he is in awkward situations or just basically not appropriate response. Like we, yeah, stress, as humans normally, situations. we laugh when something's funny, right? And then, but he laughs in all the wrong sort of, and uncontrollably, it's, it's, it's basically like Tourette syndrome, you know, how people yeah. say words out loud that they shouldn't it's like it's like a sneeze you can't help it it just comes out and he has the same thing when he laughs and he's aware that it's it's not right you know and then uh, this kind of gets him in troubles and everything and then that's a specific laugh it's very it's very authentic and it's kind of like makes him cough and he you can see he's trying to stifle it and, and that's kind of aggravate him and that was cool on the other hand he's he's sort of not socially well aware of stuff maybe a little bit on the autism yeah. spectrum i'm not i'm not sure mm-hmm. exactly this mm-hmm. is inspired mm-hmm. very much by martin scorsese movies characters from from the 70s and which one of the movies we actually watched <laughs> yeah but yeah v- v- very similar characters so so he doesn't he's not really doesn't know when to laugh and there's a few scenes in the movie when he's uh watching a stand-up comedian he's trying to figure out when to laugh and he has this other laugh, which would was great. Uh, Phil laughed, is this high pitched <laughs> laugh, with, with, which is like, oh, I'm supposed to laugh because he wants to be a comedian. That's this is the second laugh, and they're very different, and 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 they really work, work well with the, with the story. And then and then there's this third laugh, and that's when he transforms into the Joker, 
when when he realizes he loves dark humor and and he finally actually finds his actual humor that's the real real laugh you know when 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 he's actually finding things funny so I thought wow, that's a really that's a cool character. I enjoy killing now. Exactly. Like I love. Uh, <laughs> that's that he becomes the Joker. <laughs> Remember that Jake? He's free now. I do. <laughs> that was that was a, I, I was that was a um, reference to Tim. You wouldn't know this, but there's this what, game what called Conquest for Middle Earth, and it's like Star Wars Battlefront, <laughs> but with Lord of the Rings characters. Okay. And there and there's a lot of really stupid dialogue, and one of them was that Frodo when he got the ring in Mount yeah. Doom, he says that I enjoy killing now. That's amazing. That reminds me of a. I have killed the whole oh. world. <laughs> myth to fallen lord. No, myth to soul bladder. Soul exactly. bladder. That's so really, I would say that as that's a really actually a very interesting cool observation. observation. I did not think yeah. about. And that's and I think that's something that came from him as 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 because I because it actually was written in him and mine from the beginning, and I think he was also interested in playing in a movie like this. He didn't really want to do like a comic book movie. And even he joined this movie thinking like it's not there's not gonna be any sequels or anything like that. But I think that's probably his interpretation and it kind of made it into the movie and I think it adds to the depth and it's a, it's a cool thing. Yeah, yeah. So Phil And then Oh, oh. sorry, I didn't no, say no, 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 Go no. on. Yeah, this is great. Thank you for reminding me. Go on. It's it's okay, Mr. Host. So uh things I didn't like. There's two things I didn't like, and they're very okay. specific. And it's basically if I was Mr. Executive, you know. An executive producer and and the director showed me the cut, cut and I'd be like, "It's all good, boy. It's all good. I'm smoking my cigar, but can we <laughs> can we cut two scenes out of this goddamn picture? It's gonna be perfect." <laughs> so two things I would cut. One thing I, I would cut mm-hmm. is when we find out that the whole love affair with his neighbor is not real. We do this right. super horry jump cutty shot where they show all the scenes that she's not there it's like super uh, the fight, fight club, club and scene. Everything. yeah yeah the yeah. fight club scene it's unnecessary i think this movie's breathing and living in a very natural way and that just takes it out i know it's for people so they're not confused yeah it's for but the people I, who guys, are guys i don't remember this what you're talking about what, what's the all right so, so zazzy yeah, beats for- <laughs> who's Zazzy Beats? Who's that? She's the actress who's oh, the Oh, okay. What's she who's, like? A, who's the neighbor hopper? lady? I don't she's know. Like a, like a rapper? She's half German. Oh, oh that's cool. And uh so you remember that? Jay, I just mm. wanted to ask you guys. No. Did you when did you notice that she wasn't actually there? What? I I, I she thought wasn't there. I, what else what Jacob? You, would he, he? He never had Jacob. the love affair with her. She, well, I know he, he never had a love, love, love affair, but she was real. Yeah, she, yeah, she was, she was real. real okay, but, yes, but, I know that. I know. Okay, that. <laughs> I got worried there. <laughs> Panicking. So, so they made it for Jacob, people like Jacob, and then in the end, he doesn't even recognize it. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the love affair thing it wasn't. It was in his head, right? That's why yeah, yeah, it was of, all in his head. But when yeah. did you figure that out? Um, did you even have an? Inkling? I guess when he was at the apartment later. You mean when he's like, like where, where they day. reveal it? And she's like, <gasps> yeah, oh, like right like, at the end, right? He's like, and he's like wet hair and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. the end. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, I, 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 I had a, I had a really strange feeling watching through it. Like something is wrong here. I thought I missed a moment. I was, I was like, what is this? Like a Seth Rogen movie where like the hot girls in love with a weirdo, like, like this doesn't make any sense. What the right. hell is this? And I didn't think of the fact that he's going mental because he just gets gets off his medication that moment so it explains everything you know and and it, and it makes sense i just i just didn't put two two together right. when she's standing there and like what are you doing in my room like exactly like jake that was like oh yeah you dang. know what me too me too i didn't but listen, i didn't guys, know I, i've but i've i've watched a, i've watched there i go again i've listened to a bunch of podcasts already about the joker and there's so what, many people what? yeah there's yeah. so many people who are already caught on to it, and I don't know, but like for me, I didn't. I don't know what it is. I just I. Well, you guys were stupid. Us. But if my no. wife watched this, she would probably oh, think man. before she even enters she the movie. Would, she would yeah. like, she's not real. <laughs> you will. You guys will love this anecdote from me, which is that I found out then. Yes, but at the beginning, when she's like, "What are you doing in my apartment?" I figured like, "Oh, I guess they haven't gotten to that point where he's allowed to go to her apartment." <laughs> oh, like they're like, "Oh, like she's, too like, much? she's like, she's like, yeah, she's like, it's too late and stuff. Like we never agreed to you know seeing each other. You can't just like basically not that. You're like you can't walk in 
just like that unannounced you know oh you can't walk in phoenix in here motherfucker ah, you and can't walk in mad. the line oh I shit she was angry there I about go. that okay yeah. <laughs> and the other thing that i would love to cut is oh, yeah i did not like that by the way tim i was watching this and i was like you don't have to i can I was predict really... what you're gonna say go yeah, ahead Phil. like that go on you, you want to you, you, you want to predict what the second thing is yes yes because okay, I, so, if, if it's true, then you would agree with okay, me. Okay, so, so, so search your feelings and okay. uh, tell me. <laughs> I would say, I'm going to speak more of like what I would cut, but this maybe might be your answer. The Batman okay. stuff. Well, n- the Batman stuff is great, except one <sighs> shot. Do not show me. Okay, well, we don't know. <laughs> Thomas Wayne's Wayne. Thomas getting killed. Yeah, no, and the yeah. pearls. Just, just well, like, uh, yeah. like I you didn't, can put I didn't two, like two, two together. Like, yeah. if they had the shot, them leaving the theater. And, and the you clown have the guy. Zorro there. And yeah. not even the clown. Maybe they just leave and a clown guy looks. That's enough. It's That's enough. All you, you know what's funny? It's all I you was need. actually pleasantly all surprised. I don't know what you guys think, that the connection was very loose for the most part. Well, it should have been, and yeah. stuff like that. I, I, I didn't like even that. expect I, it exist. I, I went to see this movie. Me neither. Either. Me neither. Because tr- I saw the trailer a long, long time ago, like the first one, and I thought, oh, it's going to be co- totally separate. It's, yes. it's like it's like it's going to be like um, Old Man Logan, right? Mm-hmm. It's going to be one of those. It's like it's it's very different. It's got its own story, and it's not really connected that much, right? It's going to be fine. And then, <laughs> and then they hit you with the bombshell because, like, okay, yeah. there's there, there's there's Thomas Wayne. It's like I ah, did like know. the Thomas Wayne because it's Thomas Wayne. It has nothing to do with yeah. anything Batman, right? And then then there's Brucey. Then Brucey's there's there. Bruce. Yeah. That's what I like, also didn't like. I, it, well, it's it's it, it's okay. I think I I mm, liked it because I, I it was like it was like so. a drama, and I was like. I was I was wondering like how much are they connected to you know the Batman universe and everything and. It, I I didn't mind it. I I thought I thought it was okay the way they played with it. Like you know the whole like he thinks he's his uh, his, his uh, son. Yeah, his half maybe brother. He isn't. Yeah, what did you think of that? Too. I think it's cool. I, I don't yeah, know. It's there's like, a it's lot a... of people that were like, <gasps> you know, I was confused. I was like, okay, so he's his half brother, and you know, like what I thought of when I was watching that is they can they're welcome to do anything because this is a totally different thing. I want to see them make their story right. Yeah. Like totally it wasn't like, fine. It wasn't like banging up like when he when he's was when he's weird. talking to Bruce over the gate. It's not like oh, one day we will be enemies. And no, thank you. So, you no. know what I mean? It was just like it, there was there was like none of none of that. Like few, like there was just like oh you know like it, it was more metaphoric of what they're gonna be instead of like punching you over the head. Except that stupid scene when they get killed. You know that yeah, that was that the, scene was unnecessary. Very unnecessary. So, Phil, um, so th- th- would you say that those are kind of in general? Okay, yeah, those are the things in general that I didn't like, just like Tim. But here's the dual edged blade that well, give me, I well, give me your first on. one, Phil, and then you'll give me the second one. What I liked about it? Yeah, like sort of like wh- more like what is something in the movie that you that you, that uh, maybe, maybe like Tim, maybe I was a little wrong, but you answered the question really well. But the I, I used the wrong wording with connect connection, but I meant more like. What is something not just that you liked, but you that maybe resonated with you in some sense, not necessarily personally, like from experience, but more mm-hmm. like what is something either an element or or a way something was done where when you were watching, you were like, oh yeah, yeah that's that's interesting, <coughs> like something you can take out and appreciate or something like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I think uh, it's not a doomer. I... What I got out to appreciate with um, that is that I liked that it was character centric, like you said, Tim. Like this was made just to have a Joaquin Phoenix, him doing something and creating a character, and the and the fact that it had just happens to be a comic book character that's pretty famous, being you know the opposite of Batman, uh, made it. Honestly, like, I know there's lots of people who will say if there was no Batman, if it wasn't Joker, it would have been a better film. But I just love Batman stuff. So, like, for me, this was a plus. <laughs> I was I was happy seeing something that felt more attuned to a real, like, drama that's taking itself seriously. But it just happens to take place in Gotham City. And that just happens to be the clown prince of crime, you know? It just yeah. happens to be the mm-hmm. Joker. And... It's what not I completely taken out. Yeah, it's like it's not no. like oh, screw with Batman stuff. That's for like lame nerds and you losers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Characters yeah. like it's there's still the appreciation for for Gotham and 
Yeah, it's, it's there. there. Lore, and, and, and that's what I liked about it because it made it feel like it's a real place instead of it being a reference for the fans and instead of it being shamed, you know, hmm. like embarrassed to show it. You guys might be actually swaying me more to this this style that you guys appreciate. They added this sort of. But then Batman again, you know, you know me. I like the Batman stuff. So <laughs> I mean. like that. And like, here's here's the thing. Here's the thing. Like, I would have been happy if they had really pushed back on all the Batman moments. Like Thomas Wayne, keep him there. He's a character in the film. That's fine. Keep Gotham um, stuff like this. Keep Gotham, but take away most of the like. What Make I Gotham didn't like again. the most, this, this is what the detriment to me was. Uh, showing Bruce standing there with his dead parents. Again, of course, that's a, I think that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's overdone. But the point that what I didn't like was giving him that extra moment at the end of the film because it felt like they were setting up something. And that's what I didn't like because if they're not going to do it, why did you do this to me? Yeah, what's the point? Because here's the, here's the thing. It's like I read afterwards that this is a DC Extended Universe is not really connected to the DC Cinematic Universe, which is, honestly, it's kind of a shame because I think it's actually... Because like in the Justice League, don't they have like like old Batman, right? So technically, yeah. this is the right age for him to be Batman. That's one thing. And secondly, you know when that uh, Jared Leto Joker came out? Yeah. Jay Leno. I thought... <laughs> Jay Leno, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I thought... Honestly, and this is without reading anything or, or, or like reading rumors, I thought he was a Joker fan. Like, let's say in the in that universe, because it's old Batman, so there's an old Joker somewhere, right? Maybe who died. And oh, he's yeah. like this legend and this new Joker, because he looks so different and he's got like Joker written all over him and all this stuff. No, he needs damaged, he, damaged, he's damaged whatever. On, on the forehead of, of him. I yes. thought he's like a Joker fan who like, Joker's dead, but I will embody the new Joker. You know, it's like a young lad. He's trying to be oh, Joker. And when I you have this, you can, because everyone's like, everyone's was angry at that Joker. Like he's lame and he's not the real Joker. So I they mean, can, he is, I, but yeah. <laughs> so, so you can actually have that retcon as like, oh, look, yeah. he's not the real Joker. He's just a modern Joker who's a fan of the Joker. And then you can have Batman kill him or something like that. And then out, you know, comes Joaquin Phoenix out of the grave. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, that's, that's too but much, that's obviously. A, that's another but, thing. Like, is this the, like, if you're talking about Batman, Joker proper. is classically more of a intelligent person. You know, like this Joker is, is a fool. But he's that's the thing. He he is a he's he's socially yeah. inept, and he's I, I he's, he's, he's but I think fool. he's a genius once the medication wears off and he finds his true right, self. Right, right, I think right, when yeah. he when he finally fills in, no pun intended, horrible metaphor, his clown shoe. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like once he's in his own skin, I think there's genius. Like remember remember when when he's uh he's like, is is I think it's it's after he's fired. And he thinks he had like a romantic date with that lady, and they, I think they call him for the, or something. It's like he has a great day, right? He shoots the guys. Obviously, he's really mm-hmm. happy about shooting those guys. I kind of like maybe he's a psychopath. I don't know, like whatever that 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 kind of fills him up. And he's like, his jokes are funny. Like he goes in there, like, "Hey guys, let me punch out," right? And he punches the the box out. All right, right. And then he's walking out, and what marker he writes down? It uh, says, yeah. I think. Oh, remember for- it was always it- keep. No, was it? What did it say? It was. It was said. Don't forget to smile. And he's yes, and he scratches he, out. Forget. Don't forget to forget. Don't so smile. it's like don't smile. And it's like you can clearly see. Like once he's in his element, he's actually smart. It's just society and medicine kind of kept him. And maybe this is a wrong message or whatever. But for <laughs> character crazy and and batshit insane like the Joker, it fits perfectly to me at least. Oh, okay, okay, mm. that's interesting. Also, what's interesting is that, uh, yeah, I would say that he isn't just a fool. I don't think he is a fool. I think that he <laughs> no, no, no. I, <laughs> I think he is, obviously has, you know, very big issues. But I think that uh, the genius part of it is his ability, right, to somehow um, use this momentum, right, that he created and to sort of like somehow push himself in like the right places at the right time in a way and sort of in a weird strange way he's not like some kind of leader or something but because he's totally uh you know uh nothing to lose in a sense 
he's the one who actually goes and, you know, does all these crazy things that somehow then people, you know, kind of like follow him in a weird, strange way. Yeah, it was like a weird coincidence. I think like the, the like Gotham is like, it's like a class of like New York in the 70s talking about the other movie. What was your, your movie you picked? What was it, Jake? The King Comedy. King, no, 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 no. The other movie we, we watched a couple episodes back. Mm. It was also uh, in the 70s it was in New York. The most violent year. Exactly. It, it's the same situation. You know, it's, it's it's downtown has trouble with violence. This is Gotham exactly. And you can hear always in the news, oh, there's people are not picking up trash. There's like, uh, they're on strike and madness and everything is slowly building up. And then Joker kills these people and they, they find the face. The protesters find the, the face and they're, they're all clowns. And in the end, he's appreciated, but he didn't really want it. Like, he didn't really aim for it to get it but he yeah. loves it because he wants to be entertainer so obviously him being well, I think appreciated also is because something. yeah because he wants to be seen right that's his whole thing and that's what he tells yeah. tells a the therapist that's what he realizes that that's what his, in his life didn't make any sense that he was a total unknown and this way you know it works in in, in a very bizarre and wrong way it works i mean he gets what he wants what he wants right yeah I I guess yeah. yeah. I, Phil, I, yeah. yo 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 yeah, yo Phil, listen, hey man, did did you have anything else you wanted to say? I feel like we kind of just sort of cut you off there, bud. <laughs> it's true. Um, I apologize. Uh, something um, something you didn't resonate with you mm. something that made yes, didn't resonate. That's true. Dissonance with your body was that what it is? No, because we talked about something that you appreciated, which was sort yeah. of the connection to Batman. You you enjoy Batman and you. You thought that was good. You love Batman. You want to make love you to wanna, Batman. Batman's just to in know. your dreams. You have posters of Batman on your <laughs> walls. Just, You're like, bats touch me. Sorry. Okay. You like his uh, big bat. Listen. Uh, you, so, you like that. <laughs> uh, what's something that didn't resonate with you, but de-resonated? Um, Dissonance. Mm. The vibrations. Well, those clicked. moments that Tim mentioned, which I totally agree with. Um, Here's a great question. That, for, sorry. But I also felt like the movie is a movie, but I felt like at the end... <laughs> it's a great it sentence. <laughs> the movie is a movie. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> but what I felt was like at the end, like... She put down the box. It's, it's, it's what happened. <laughs> but it doesn't feel like there was anything that you learned from it. There's It doesn't feel like there's anything that you got away from. You know, like you went away with. Mm -hmm. Does that make any sense? Because that's it, how it, it felt it like makes to me. Sense. It just felt like, all right, you know. Well, this well, was... That was Sorry, film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we need face cameras because so we can avoid these situations. Okay, I'll I'll I'll, I'll say my first. The, when I was going to the cinema, my wife was like, "Oh, I, I'm you know so sad I couldn't go see the movie because she wanted to go see it because in her words she was like, I'm really interested in watching these movies where you go see like what it takes to break a man." to turn into a, a murderous lunatic, like all right. the bad stuff that happens, w w you know, what tips him over the edge? And, and w w she was asked like, so, so how was it in that context? And I was like, well, it, actually it, the trailers make it look like that. But what I think personally is that it's different. It's, it's not that it's, you know, what tips him over and, and he, he loses his mind. It's, you know, like, oh, you feel sorry for the person, even though when it, when it starts because of the conditions and, and the bad thing, you do feel sorry for him. Mm. But it's like, it's not that he goes crazy because he loses it. He kind of finds himself in a way. It's yes, like he becomes right. I wanted to say that that's who he was all the time. That's the difference. Yeah. It wasn't like that, oh, that's why I think the sympathy part doesn't work so much in this movie. And I no. think very well, like in that sense, it functions because you don't feel sorry for him you, you at all. You know, like, of course, no. like, sure, he has his condition and his life situation is bad. But I mean... In, I like that they played that um, difference between the sort of extremes, right? Where you have like Wayne, who's like an ex exemplification of like the 1%, right? Like he's like, mm -hmm. get a job and go. And then you have like the Arthur and sort of like lower class people who are like blaming the system and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Two extremes. But they play it out both ways because, you know, Wayne isn't wrong, right? But then at the same time, like Arthur, <laughs> like, isn't necessarily wrong too. Walter, you know? you're not wrong. You're just an asshole. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah, just yeah. an asshole. <laughs> and then Arthur necess isn't necessarily wrong with like sort of feeling, you know, totally trapped and, you know, this not situation listened is to terrible. and stuff like that. Yeah. People but at the same time, to him. doesn't yeah. excuse any of his things he did. You know, he is, he made those decisions and those are absolutely wrong. 
And so, but then you see that that's, like you said, he's finding himself in a very twisted sense. Yeah. And when he shoots Robert Nero in the face on TV, he's so comfortable in that moment. Oh, yes. Thank you for reminding me. Thank yeah, you. I wanted to go. I wanted to get to that. Yes. Phil will tell us because uh, I'm the host and I'm, I'm so graciously giving you all this time. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Thank you, host. Well, Jake and I, we watched uh, the animated adaptations of Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns. Uh Uh-huh. And this is pretty much what happens in The Dark Knight Returns. Uh, The Joker shows up at a talk show. In Mm -hmm. that story, the Joker was in an asylum for a long time, and he convinced everybody that he was healthy, he was fine. Mm -hmm. He he uh, he went to like a rehab process. And, and so like these a, morons yep. take him to a talk show host <laughs> yeah. and he starts talking about his life. Well, can, can but then, of with... course, what happens is he, he kills everybody in the audience anyway. Oh, yeah, because but, the, yeah, but that's, yeah, that's, but, that's, but that's it was the, actually a really the interesting, 80s Batman. That's, that's, it was an interesting yeah. setup because they sort of played it out where like there's a psychologist, for instance, who's working with him and he's defending him on television and he's talking about how he's a changed person, he's showing genuine remorse and stuff like that. And the Joker does that too in the in the in the we watched the film, right? Phil was like a mm-hmm. cartoon adaptation yeah. of the comic, right? Mm-hmm. And you really the great thing about that was that you really start to believe the Joker and you're like, This sounds really genuine. Like he's totally changed. He's not the same person. And like Phil said, you know, it does a total one eighty. Yeah, he takes a mug and then and he breaks the mug, and then he stabs his like, like psychiatrist in the yeah in in the throat. <laughs> and on live, oh, on live television, and that's what it reminded me of in this film was that sequence. Mm-hmm. It was interesting because I felt like people who had read that comic or, or watched it will have obviously known sort of the parallel. Um, like words heading, like you could feel it. Yes, yes. I mean, I honestly, for me, I saw it more or less like as soon as like he was on the. Yeah. So do you never believe that movie, he was going to commit suicide? Right? Yeah, yeah. Because in the movie, I it's so implied he's going to kill himself. Still, I, I was like, really hoping mm-hmm. he didn't, because that's like the that's like the cheesy outing, you know? That's yeah. like, oh no, this bad person kills himself in the end, so he can walk out of theater and feel safe. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like everything's okay in the end. He killed himself. <laughs> Man. <laughs> we talked about yeah. this in the most violent year that we were annoyed that that guy killed himself in the end. Everything turns oh, out. Oh, yeah. Right. That's right. Oh, did. Yeah, that's right. I was like, yeah. Uh, what did you want to say, Jake? Um, no, I want to say, do you guys have anything else to add? I have one thing to add from my perspective of the film. That I have I some questions for you guys, but we, you can tell yours first. Cool. And then I think we can move on. Um, what I found the most interesting about this movie is that both this film and The King of Comedy, which is our second film, mm-hmm. both deal with a very interesting concept, which is parasocial relationships, which is our relationships to uh, well-known people mm-hmm. and how that affects us and how we perceive that and how that, you know, functions because for instance like both in the king of comedy what's his name again rupert is that his name pumpkin pumpkins pumpkins pumpkin pumpkin both him and arthur have this fixation on a talk show host on a celebrity basically yeah and they're perceiving the celebrity in a in yeah go on and it's not a coincidence that they really i mean martin scorsese was a producer at the beginning on this movie and and they really wanted to adapt that sort of thing into this movie so it's not a coincidence they're yeah, really I were mean, inspired by we'll King see in the second half and taxi of the driver episode well. that yeah taxi driver people kept talking about that but i haven't seen the movie in a while so i don't remember yeah. and we'll talk about it in the second half but that to me was a really cool parallel because you know that sequence at the beginning of joker where he's imagining himself in the studio and he gets picked out and he gets recognized and everything's going yes how he wants to I immediately knew that was a that was an imagination sequence. Yeah. I think that's why people knew that the girl was fake as well because they uh-huh. established the th- thing that he does well, look, the same I mean, thing like daydreaming. I wanted to explain like the way I saw it was just that there might be someone like that, like Zazie Beats in this movie that uh, just seems to ignore that and just is being supportive. You know, right? Like, gotcha, just, gotcha. There are people. I'm, I'm sure there are people like that. There are nice people like, in this world. Maybe not a nice people, but who also have some sort of, who don't see the big oh, picture. Oh, I see what you mean, yeah. 
Yeah. So I was, I was just, I was okay. There, I mean, there's probably people like that. So I mean, it's weird that it's such a coincidence. But hey, you know, I don't know. Yeah, and so that whole sequence sort of reminded me that um, it's it's both at the same time. I like that they kind of got all the beats right and how you would imagine a situation like that for yourself. Mm -hmm. Because for instance, like with myself, I've imagined countless times, especially when I was younger of like, you know, what if like, you know, I played on stage or like, you know, something happened and the events lined up perfectly where I like got this opportunity or something like that. Or I met somebody, let's say famous, right. That I admired. And like, what would the conversation look like? And I would talk to them and, and you'd imagine them replying in the most unrealistic way but in the most like encouraging and supportive way. <laughs> That's what I really just, wanted to ask you guys as well. Is like do you still like I, I remember like you too, as like when I was a kid, I would have this constant, especially a teenager, like I would find a new celebrity and in my head there was this whole story, like especially if it was a musician, you know, I would play and then they would go, Oh, you're so great and then they would talk and they were like, Oh, let me set you up with a deal and yes, just, my whole yes. life was basically planned out. And then, you know, like a few days I would forget about it, like the, the whole the whole story. And and I find myself, I was thinking about the exact same thing, Jake, is like that the older I am, this doesn't happen so recently, but it right. still happens a few times. Like if I'm on a bus or before I fall asleep, sometimes the brain just, just gets away. I'm still well, wondering, do you, know do you guys still have this? Uh, I don't have it. I, I pretty much don't have it anymore. Um, I do, I do, my brain automatically goes to that. Let's say if I, for instance, like, maybe heard about let's say someone i admire or something who's mm -hmm. a, who's well known being maybe they might be in town or something like that or i heard about them potentially being somewhere close then my brain automatically goes into some of those scenarios okay, so right but back into the old mode back in the old mode, but not but not so much like it was when i was younger when you would really be like sort of it would be so extravagant and so like hopeful <laughs> and stuff like that i think nowadays it's more like your brain automatically does it and then you're yeah. like, oh, yeah, yeah, I need to like tone this down and just like think about well, <laughs> if, if I wanted to meet them, what would I say that's like very normal and not, you know, strange? Oh, you or... like you do a, like a realistic version of your imaginary path. Like you try to tone something it down. Something like that. Yeah, something like that. But anyway, I want to say... Like, don't be a ridiculous brain. <laughs> yeah, okay. exactly. But what's interesting is that these things, these imaginations, they've all resurfaced in my dreams. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not anymore in my imagination. Now it's in my dreams. And it still happens from time to time, you know? Like I'll meet, yeah. a, I'll meet a musician or something and it'll go so great. It's like, we'll be hanging out, we'll be drinking beers and they'll be asking oh, man, me there questions this... about my life and I'll be like, I have... man, that's so cool. <laughs> oh, I do I do have one of those things that happened in a dream of mine. Okay. And it was funny because I don't have as much of a tie to this person as you two do and so i actually dreamed that i met dave grohl, dave grohl oh say. man and I was, honestly I was like about to I'm bring not... up my dave grohl dream <laughs> but this one. is my dave grohl week, dream so but the, but but the funny thing about mine is that i really like i don't have any connection with dave grohl yeah, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I didn't i don't listen to a lot of foo fighters i'm sure it's very good you know and, and dave grohl seems like a cool guy but i've not seen yeah. enough of him to know right so i don't really mind so in my dream I literally didn't care so much, you know, and I, yeah. and I met him and I'm like, like oh, Dave, Dave Grohl, I know you, my brother and my cousin, Tim, they love you and I would love to show you some of their music. That's what oh, I you're did. You're such a good guy. You're that's, such a good guy. That's Look at this. super nice. You actually you introduced are... us to him. Wow. Yeah, 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 like, yeah because I like know that you guys like fantasy. him. Yeah, yeah. But this is <laughs> amazing. And guys, I have an upgrade in, person. My, in my dreams, which I'm happy about. And I think this is a sign, maybe, that I'm mm -hmm. doing a little bit better, is okay. that... Uh, now in my dreams, let's say, for instance, I had this dream with Dave Grohl. I haven't dreamed about Dave Grohl in a long time. But there was... But listen, it's like but, the uh, anonymous is like, I yeah. Jake, haven't dreamed about Dave Grohl yeah, in yeah, yeah. Well, seven if months. You know, I, uh, Dave Grohl is one of my heroes. So anyway, I want to say that I dreamt about him because I think either I listened to a song or something, something with the Foo Fighters, I can't remember what it was, something came up. And then for some reason, mm -hmm. my subconscious decided to make a dream about it. Yeah, but the upgrade in the dream was that I didn't approach Dave Grohl at all. He approached me. Just let him. Oh, <laughs> but listen. But it's interesting because you know usually in those old dreams and stuff like that, usually it'll always be a situation where it's like, oh, I need to go talk to him. Like I need to introduce yeah, myself, yeah. and and then it works out. But this dream was different. Where it was like, I was super chill. I wasn't even thinking about like mm -hmm. annoying him or anything. Like that. I was just like, oh, that's cool. Like, because you know, I think the older you get, the more you realize that like 
this whole strange, and this is why I, the movies are interesting to me, the King of Comedy and the Joker, is that they're sort of a little bit exploring this idea of parasocial relationships, which I find yeah. very fascinating because the older you get, they change for you. Yeah. When you're, especially when you're younger, they're very different. And so for me, for instance, like as I get older, the more I realize like the world really is kind of small. If you think about it, like even with like mm. celebrities and things like that, like they are, you know, people just like you. The only difference is that more people have seen their things, you know, and of course they have a bigger ac accomplishments, obviously. Mm. Right. But at the end of the day, still, it's like, for instance, it's that classic thing of like, let's say if you know somebody, let's say who happens to be well known. Your relationship yeah. with them will be normal. It'll be like your friend, right? It's like just like oh, yeah. And and that the funny thing is that let's say like then you realize like this whole like concept of like celebrity and being known and stuff like that. It's it's not so strange if that makes sense. And you also realize like the older you get, that like <laughs> that you're just a person. And it's like if you do meet them, like the best you can do is be like, hey man, like uh, really nice <laughs> to meet you, and that'll be you know. An interesting experience, right? Yeah, because when you're, you're younger, a complete stranger to them, absolutely. And and when you're younger, well, you, you think, know everything about them. <laughs> yes, and and that's that's the whole Such you know, a concept -way story. is that you know the parasocial relationship, like psychological aspect. I didn't read much about it, but I listened to a few podcasts mm -hmm. about it. Is that is that it's that concept, right? Where it's like those people know nothing about you, zero, but you know so much about them, or at least how they you know present themselves. Well, it's different. I think it's different nowadays, especially with different kind of uh, celebrities. Because back in the day, like a movie star, rock star, there's obviously interviews and there's magazine. Maybe there's some paparazzi that give you a glimpse of their lives, right? But it's still, it's 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 quite minimal. And and they were you know crazy people, crazy fans back in the day. And I think uh, you know when you have like Instagram celebrities or or, or vloggers where you're daily fed their mm -hmm. realistic life, or at least what they portray as their realistic life. I think it's even 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 crazier caliber of of knowing someone while they know absolutely nothing to. I think the extreme is even right. even larger because you're so connected to them. And well, I it's think not just that; it's also people on YouTube and stuff. It's not anymore movie stars. It's not anymore people who are working. It's just people who are kind of yeah. You know, just... I mean, I think still movie stars are still like well, well, but the thing is, movie stars nowadays, like 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 we're doing this podcast, and every episode on Instagram podcast. we do a post, right? Mm -hmm. And then it's funny that you can clearly like, and then I try to tag people, you know, on Instagram, like, oh, we did an episode and these are the main stars. And it's like, <laughs> you can see the generation gap. If it's like someone, anyone born after 995, I'm pretty sure they're going to be on Instagram, right? You know, there's obviously exceptions, right. you know, Van Diesel and The Rock are on Instagram because <laughs> they have good Diesel. PR people. Van Diesel. Van Diesel. But it's like right anyone else is like... Mustang. <laughs> But anyone else is like, yeah, they're not there. Like, they don't care about this stuff. But anyone's young, right. like, obviously they're on Instagram, you know? Yeah. Like, even if yeah. they're a movie star. And uh, what I also wanted to add was that um, it's a nice, actually, feeling the older you get to be, like, content with... If you yes, would meet absolutely. someone who you admired, like, again, like, really, like, it would just be... It's just being content with, let's say, just greeting them, saying hi, saying a few sentences. The reality is that like you know it's it's sad but it's true that they will forget what you said they will they will forget who they met right and it's just like that you got to meet them you know in the flesh you know that's something that's cool because when you're younger you like we talked about you go through that whole crazy brain cycle of like this is my big break i'm gonna introduce him to all my music yeah and, and then he'll he'll say wow you're a musician i'm gonna take your tape and then i'm gonna put in my cassette machine and press play and I'll, 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 I'll sign you up, you know, and you can join our band on tour. You want to come on tour? You know, or you can join us on a song, the last song you play. Yeah. And I kind of like that feeling of like being content because again, you realize that if you w wanted to be friends with them, you know, uh, in like an actual sense, a genuine sense, not a strange like fan sense, well, then you'd have to do, the, well, do what they did. You have to build a career uh, in that yeah. industry or field and work your way, you know, through it. And then maybe, yeah, opportunities might come down the road where, who knows, you know, maybe you would work with Dave Grohl or something. I'm just saying. But they might like your work before and then, you know, that establish a connection. And exactly. And hang out with them. And if you find out you have in common. But I actually know. love that sort of feeling now that I'm older because it, it just means like, it makes everything sort of, in everything feels like it's in its place, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, 
yeah, like if you're a filmmaker and you want to work with the people, then, then you have to go do that, you know, to actually get there, you know? And, yeah. But, but you're not like, you're not, your goal isn't to work with them necessarily. <laughs> your goal is to work on your stuff. Yeah. And yeah. Maybe, and, maybe you would. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I wanted to bring a poignant uh, quote that um, one of the screenwriters for Aladdin, for Pirates of the Caribbean, for various other kinds of bigger films uh said well, what's bigger uh, than pirates and aladdin <laughs> i mean those are old right pirates is a dead franchise you know aladdin not Aladdin's the remake the original you the know original, I mean? like the the from the a thousand and one tales oh no 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 a night. <laughs> it's a little too old um, <laughs> um it's either ted elliott or terry and, rossio did you ever watch uh, the popeye those. aladdin episode no no, I only watched a dub. Oh, was it the one where he's like, "Open sesame"? Eh, no, there's a lamp one, an actual lamp one. When he, no, that's oh, like no, the no. bandits one. He's he's like, and then <laughs> the bad guy's like, he comes in and he's like, uh, whatever. Jasmine is Olivia, Olivia, olive oil, olive, Olivia. olive oil, olive oil, <laughs> and uh, and they're hey, chilling yeah. out, and he's like kissing her hand, whatever, and he's got the lamp because he's like the prince now. And the evil Jafar dude, he's like down there and he comes like, ah, new lamps for old lamps, new lamps for old lamps. And he's like, and, and uh, uh, Olive Oil is like, oh, I got a lamp. And he checks a, uh, Popeye's lamp down there and he just throws her like a, like a torch, you know, like a hmm. whatever lamp. Flashlight? Oh, yeah, yeah, flashlight, yeah. And <laughs> jokes from the 30s. Yeah, the, I wanted to mention the quote. Yeah. Okay, yeah, your quote. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Keep interrupting. I apologize. It was apologize. either Ted Elliott or Terry Rossio who said this, and they said that. And I always think about this because I've not done anything this big or at all. But it's, there's some little things that kind of make me already feel like this is true. When he said, um, "This is talking about the film industry," but I think it's any other creative field that you get into, and this is also about you know, like you, your ambitions to wanting to be friends with famous people and big stars and stuff like this is that from the outside, you're looking at this, you know, your goal that you want to get to, be it being friends with celebrities, being it in the film industry. Fame and fortune. In, yeah. Stuff like that. You're looking at it Beloved from the outside and you creators. see this, you see this huge, tall gate, you know, guarded and big, and it takes you forever to have to find a way in, climb all the way up. And then when you get up to that gate and you look down, it's, not even existent you don't feel like you've been anywhere right right because it's all the same you know what i mean like you sure you know people but it's really they're all just normal people and it's all yeah. it would all feel the same i think what's a, to me that's a very poignant that's their work quote. is big know. but they're just still normal people yeah. yeah yeah i think it's more like interesting the way i look at it is like at the end of the day everyone has their own like path in what they're doing right and because a lot of people think like, oh, how can I be like this person? I'm going to copy their, I'm te- use their template. And it's like, no, that's exactly how it doesn't work. It's like you do your own thing and you're on your own path. And if you are you know, passionate about that and you want to keep going with that, then you're literally going to, going to do the grind and, you know, keep going your own path. And then what's cool about that is that, yeah, like along the way, you'll maybe meet people, not saying necessarily famous people, but you'll meet people who are also on their own path. And that to me feels cool you know it's more like relative in that sense and less of yeah. this strange you know mountain yeah. like you're talking about i mean it's like it's 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 an alternative path obviously and i think i would also recommend that path you know you you find your own way and then yeah. the people who you admire might admire you back they might not you know maybe you'll work out but instead of but it, it it the opposite which is still a viable option but i think it's 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 something it's like a conundrum. Like people say, "Oh, you know, I want to be rich." Like that's that's not a it's not a goal to have. Like, <laughs> yeah. What what does it mean to be rich? You know, that there's no or like I like people say, "I want to be happy in my life." What what does that mean? I want to like how do you how do you define that? How do you even measure that? Right. It's the same thing. I, I want to know famous people. It's like well, what what does that get you? Exactly. Sure, you can, you know, you can you can go you know on a i don't know like a reality show and you can you can follow everyone and does every do everything exactly like people who are famous and you will get famous but it's like i think it might it i, I don't know because i'm not famous yeah. but it might be a hollow end you know just yeah. from movies and and from other people experiences well told. this is why let's say also for instance i don't think and i haven't 
I, I don't think I would, let's say, take a photo, for instance, like with a famous person. And the reason why that is, is because I don't know what to do with that photo once I take it. I know. Because it's a very strange concept. Because, <laughs> for instance, like I, I take you a give photo. give it to a child and you tell them. Yes, yeah, but tell them what? I met him point. for 15, <laughs> I met this person for 15 seconds. Like, you know what you I'm saying? You will be like, never as great as me because you have never met this person. I'm just saying that life. it's a strange concept <laughs> because you take a photo with us, someone you admire or something like that. And then what do you do? Let's say, okay, you can go the classic route and share it on social media, right? But now what have you done? It's a it's cool. get a few likes, but it's get a, a few strange wow. concept because you've now you've sort of used this person you admire <laughs> to show others that you've seen them in the flesh for 15 seconds. It's almost like it's in a strange way, almost like um I don't want to say like disrespectful, but it's like it doesn't mean anything to you because what do you what do you do with that photo? And when you look at the photo yourself, what does that mean to you? Like, oh, I saw them, you know. <laughs> Like, it, 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 but it, but it's still it it you know. But sometimes, like you know, I, the biggest celebrity that I've bumped into met was was the basis for Mastodon, right? And and it's still the rush and the like. But wouldn't it was you still, say? Wouldn't you say like the memory of that, like the experience, was interesting and it was for you interesting, right? Yes, and that's pretty much all it is, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it it's yeah. it's it's still there, there. There's something to it that that's a celebrity that. Like there, there's a visceral feeling to it. like that's somebody a lot of people know and respect, right? And I've only seen them in pictures and video. Oh yeah, and yeah. There they are in real life, and they're a real person. And there's like there's it's a crazy. magic to it. Like, like maybe Absolutely. after and they like, always look smaller than you think they do. <laughs> always. <laughs> yeah. They always like, look. They always. They're also like really high resolution too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like a high you can see the pores and like and and they're like and, 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 and like I'm not I'm not like you know pumpkins who has a book of all the autographs. You know, like like a collector is like a madman yeah. who collects all the celebrities. Like, who's a fan of celebrities? It's just that when you do see a celebrity, like, there's a certain, oh, there's man, a certain yeah, gravitational it's pull called to what's it. Being you know? star tru- starstruck, yeah. And especially if there's some, if there's someone who their work had a lot of meaning to you personally, you know, and you like yeah. you engage with their work for years. It's really, really, it's strangely stressful because but that it's being like, said, yeah. that being said, are you talking said, to a cup? What's going on? Yeah, yeah, I am. <laughs> but that being said, um, I feel like that's where I learned when you're older. For me, the meeting is always going to be uh, a subjective feeling because I can meet people that I've just known, you know, through the internet. They're not even famous, but when you meet them in real life, it's like, oh. Yeah. Wow. Real. real. I just want to, you just want to touch their face, like something. Mush them, like, you know something, what I mean? <laughs> something I really enjoyed doing, which I, I obviously don't have much opportunity to do this, but when I talked to you guys about going to Berlin, there was a man named Chris Doe who is, I think, I think I would say he's like famous in the design community, not necessarily yeah. generally, but in the design community, a lot of people know about him and know his work. Chris Doe. Yeah, Chris Doe, and, and consider his him like cousin a, Chris Bread. Consider him like a pioneer, you know, in graphic design and and, uh, and encouraging and educating about graphic design. And I just had like learned about him a month or two ago and didn't even follow very much about what he was doing. And uh, I got to, uh, you know, my friend, but my friend was a fan of him for years and followed him for like five plus years. And it was a really, really interesting experience because I like there was no gravity. You know, like mm-hmm. it was exciting meeting him because I know that other people know about him and he's influential and he's a, you know, a really, really great designer. But my friend was like, you know, I felt like he was like, it was, it was a bigger deal for him, obviously meeting him where for me it was like, oh, this is fun. You know, like I, like other people know much more about him. Like, you know, we basically don't know anything about each other. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was pretty exciting. I was like, and I got to meet him and I shake his hand and say, "Hey, I'm Jake." Blah blah. blah. And we asked him a couple of questions, and then you know that was that. And it was like, cool. Like, and I, I met him. Cool. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he's great. I'm like, I follow him now and stuff like that on Instagram. And I, you know, it's not like I just like I met someone who people know. I'm just saying that the experience is different when you don't have yes, that definitely. gravity behind. Wow. Well, this is kind of like we talking about. Okay. Do you guys want to say anything else about the Joker or no? I, I had some questions for you guys, but um, uh, I don't know. Do you want to well, skip well, them? Or... Yeah, no, if 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 we can cover them in five minutes, then we can. Yeah, I think so. Uh, what did, what did you what did you think of of the score, Philip? It was just like I like cellos. The score. It was just yeah, it was just, just cellos. Let me tell you something about cellos. Yeah, I think you know this. Someone mentioned that uh, cellos 
is the closest thing to sounding like a human voice. And a male, that's why, human voice? yeah, a male human voice. Yeah. And that's why it's always used so much in, 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 um, scenes or just movies in general that want to pull at your yeah. emotional cord strings. It's just Pretty something cool. I wanted to, I, I was always thinking about when I was, when I was always hearing the cello in this movie. It's like, it's yeah. like a, it's like a, a man's voice with a vocal fry. Cause like, mm, there's that low rumble. Mm. I, I, I'll, all I could think was oh, my phone down, my notes, all I, <laughs> my phone. <laughs> all I could think about was, um, do you guys know the, uh, Apocalyptica band? Yes. No. <laughs> it's, just, I think they're like, I don't know, Scandinavian, maybe Finnish. I, I don't so. know. And they're like they're a quartet of cellos and they play they're colors like of metal music. Metal, oh know? right, 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 right. <laughs> I was just like I was listening. To it, I was like, is this? Did they do like? Oh, they probably not. No, they couldn't. Okay. So, and uh, the other thing is that what I want to ask Jake, and we can close this off with this, mm. is that you know, what is it about the character of Joker that consistently we have so many good and different renditions of the Joker character, like? This question for me? Mm. Yeah, like, you know, sure, you, you, whatever, um, the Jack Nicholson, it, it's not mm. crazy, but it's still interesting, you know. Mark Hamill's animated Joker is amazing, you know. You have all the comic stuff, like the killing joke. Uh -huh. you, you, you have Heath Ledger, like such a, what we talked about in the beginning, you know, such a monumental kind of thing. And then we have another Joker. I'm just, and, and they're all very different. They come from a different angle. It's a different character, like... Why? How come people are so inspired about it? Like, what, why do you think people connect and they they may manage to create a cool I, character like this? I would say that the only thing that comes to mind is what I talked about earlier: is that they all share the same uh, root of having nothing to lose, in the sense that they mm. are the character, the Joker. Like in in this movie, right? We have that moment where he kills those people. That, like you said, that wasn't necessarily the tipping point. That was just the um, the the beginning of going all out, you know, mm -hmm. in the sense of like now there are no barriers, right? Like, for instance, if that character might might have had a sense of morality or something earlier, that's out the window at this point, you know. Or if he had rules, yeah, right. And so now everything is basically arbitrary, and whatever that person wants to do, and whatever they see as good yeah. for them and, and yeah. they find it funny right and so it's like it's that, hilarious it's like that bizarre like the, it's like let's say the joker creates his own world where i guess it is like a psychopath i suppose in a sense um where he's he's the joker he, a psychopath he's being <gasps> like um like he's he's messing around but at the same time again has no has no rules and that's why let's say the joker in the cartoon uh, the Batman animated series, like, or or that or that series um, that Phil was talking about, the one with the what was it called, Phil? Not the Killing the Joke. The Dark Knight Returns. The the Joker is actually a very scary character because you know on yeah. one uh, you know on one moment he'll be you know joking around and being funny genuinely, and the next moment he, moment he could murder you, you know. Yeah, maybe I guess, I guess, that's what I would say. You know. I guess yeah, what, what you're what saying is say. that maybe it everyone's got this. Well, at least I I do sometimes, and especially when I was a teenager, this dark, uh, like a need to break up serious situation with something outrageous, like just absolutely chaotic. And maybe people have that desire and this is something they can't do S in real life. Like, like did you ever yeah. have like, you're sitting in like, yeah, yeah. in like church or like some kind of wedding or something like that. And your brain goes like, what if I just. Like everyone's quiet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what yeah. if I just jump out and just start screaming like a monkey? Like what the situation what would, would be? Yeah. And like there Joker is free like to do that. Right. So maybe. I think that's what, the what did you say, that connects them all. No, Phil yeah, said that's, something. That's, that's what it is. Honestly, I was going to say the same thing. It's just, uh, yeah, the Joker doesn't give a flying flamingo. <laughs> the good old FF. Yes. <laughs> so that's pretty much it, I think, uh, that we wanted think, to talk about the Joker. Yeah. Um, what, what did you people the think? The Joker. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. yeah, I'm curious. What, I'm curious what you guys would think about the movie. Not, not Caesar YouTube. Romero and the fact that he painted over his mustache when he was the Joker in the '60s Batman. <laughs> Yeah, TV that's, show? That's, that's the best rendition. What you people <laughs> think would be interesting to hear because <laughs> the guy surfed. 
Evidently, this movie is also like controversial or something. So please, is it? If you have, oh, we don't want to like we're no, running out of time. I'm not that. getting into that. But there's but I'm just that. saying that <laughs> commenting that I would like to hear what people think about the That's movie. True. Yeah. I, I speaking like of which, I want to I want to shout out to a friend of mine, friend of the podcast, who's been listening for this entire time. Wahab, he wanted to listen to this uh, particular episode. So sweet. How's it going, buddy? Shout out. There to you are. This you, one's man. for you. This one is we're, we're good you. celebrities. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you'll dream about us. Mm, that's great. <laughs> All right, oh, so I think so we're bad. ready for a track. A cool, cool track. track. Play it up, Johnny. Hit it, Johnny. young person's life where they need to figure out where they belong and what path they should take in this world. We often find ourselves walking in another person's shadow because we've admired them or followed them for so long. We find ourselves trying to become another person and never really unlock our true creative self. But I'm here to tell you, if you're looking to maximize your creative potential, we're going to have to face the fears and mental roadblocks that you've allowed to take priority in your mind. It's time you discover who you are as an artist. It's time you discover who you are as a person. It's time you step out of those shadows and become your own person. This is the time in your life where you need not discover who someone else is within you. Yeah. 
Nice. There you go. Jake, beautiful song. Jake, oh, I, yeah. I love this song. I this think was, we can only thank one person. It was a beautiful person, song. Beautiful. And that's Corey Wong himself. Corey Wong. The man, the legend. I mean, come on. Thank you so much, I Corey. Corey. I can't Wong. believe you're best friends with Corey Wong. I know. Best friends. He, he messaged me back and he said, sure, or something like that. <laughs> that was amazing <laughs> and, then, and then you took a picture with him <laughs> I took a picture with him uh, and now it's anyway, your that, Facebook that was, profile picture also that was on a track from his new record called Motivational Music for the Syncopate, Syncopated Soul sorry the track title is called Companion Pass and I would like to just really quick recommend there's two other awesome records from Corey his previous two ones uh, one was The Optimist from 2018 and the one from 2017 is, 2017 is called Corey Wong and the Green Screen Band. Both excellent records. Ooh, Go nice. Listen to them. They're amazing. If you like this kind of music, obviously. I've never heard of Corey Wong until today, and I listened what? to this. Phil, no, you, you've listened to him. No. Remember, he's in Wolfpack. He plays with them sometimes. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's who And we listened to some Corey Wong song. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Well, excuse me. You've, you know, witnessed Corey's I've witnessed the wall music in some way it's true in some way anyway before we begin I just want to say one last comment was that uh, the whole parasocial relationship thing I think it's cool though with the social media aspect now like for instance like yeah. you know I think that's brilliant I love the fact that let's say people who are well known by other people and who are doing a lot of stuff you can just like text them and be like hey man like yeah. can we use your song and Corey's like sure and it's like that's so cool I, honestly that to me is amazing it and is. sometimes it turns out that like I, it you know I, I sometimes message like I I go like ah, who cares you know I'll, I'll message them and tell them how I appreciate the work. Ninety five percent is just like nothing, and then you know not even like a thanks man, and, and then maybe two percent is like oh thank you, you know yeah 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 thank you for the yeah. comment, I'll, and then t- and then a few times I actually became friends with <laughs> with the people. they were like they were <laughs> well, like thank you, you. like. And there's just like, and people that I've like admired for like a half a year and just as obsessed, like, oh my goodness, I can't believe how good they are. And I wish, right. I wish I was like them and just like, how did they do it and everything? And then like two weeks later, I'm like, they're like commenting on my baby, like how beautiful Whoa. she is. And I'm like, yeah, and I'm like yeah. what, what, what happened? Like a half a year ago, I was like, oh my goodness, if I was in this person's shoes. So you, you never <laughs> yeah. know. I think yeah. And I, also... I want to tell you, this is, look, this is stupendous. So. I was on Twitter and I drew a picture of Godzilla and I wrote, I'm listening to Bear McCreary's score of Godzilla King of the Monsters really good. And then Bear McCreary liked it. <laughs> and now you're best friends with Bear. And now we're you're best friends. And he's commenting on baby pictures with me. <laughs> just random babies you find on the <laughs> internet. <laughs> we, we, yeah, that's what we do. We judge babies. Totally. Exactly. Um, so that's what I wanted to say before we get into the next segment. But well, classic. No, uh, what what, yeah. what 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 what? Well, I have I have. Oh, Mr. Host, I apologize. You you yes. let me know when I can speak. But I Mr. You speaker, things. Mr. Speaker, I will say, Mr. Ghosty Host, speak now. Okay, so so I got a couple of couple of follow up stuff, right? I'm pretty sure you have one follow up big one that you remember. But uh, so I have an a public apology that I was made by my wife to make. Mm-hmm. So uh, last podcast we talk about running, mm-hmm. and we talk about pace, and I have said quote. That for 5k run, my pace is five. Mm-hmm. And my li- my wife would like me to say that I haven't run a 5k run with a pace five for about two years now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's when How I was fit. If when I was fit and when I was um, when I was good at running and I ran every day, that that was my pace. Now it's more like. 5.30 up to 6. So I just want to clarify this because she listened okay. to the podcast and she okay. called me out. So that is my true what pace right Emma's now. What is Emma's pace? Can we ask? Uh, I am not at liberty to disclose mm-hmm. such things. Okay. I would rather I would rather have consult her. that with her and then I would give you the information. Or have her on the show. Or have her on the show. Even, Even better. better. Yeah. Even better. So before we go to the second follow-up, um, of 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 this uh, whatever, who cares? Uh, th- I wanted to ask Phil something. Okay. Did you see Philip that a French site has published an article that what? 2020 summer Lord of the Rings trilogy 
extended and non-extended will be released in oh, 4K. Oh yeah, that's right. The 4K. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, What's your opinion saw it on, on Reddit. this? Because well, um, speaking of what we were talking about, I was honestly hoping at some point I could be involved in working on that 4K restoration. You know. <laughs> <laughs> But um, let's hope guys, I know something see. about 4K. Let me let me let me let me help you with the biggest trilogy of uh Well, last I just want to cuz like I I just all I wanted to do is go to the salt mines and see all the uh, deleted footage. <laughs> <laughs> That's so literally the reason why I yeah. wanted to I really wanted to be involved in some form. I wanted to just go down to the salt mines and find the film, you know? And then yeah. we'll find all the deleted scenes. It's just the Mount of Moria, were... the salt mines of Moria. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh yeah, yeah look my hopes for Lord of the Rings is, I mean, first of all, it's a 2K master, so I don't know what we can do. Is it a 2K master that's been printed on a film? Yeah, and so we can take the film, we can scan it in 4K, but what else can we do with it, you know? That's the big What question. is it? Is it is the digital, the digital um, uh, effects of compression of a 2K, once it's transferred back to... Uh, a, a 35 millimeter film are the artifacts so visible or can the grain consume some of that no idea man i have no idea i don't know what they're planning on doing but if it's just going to be a lazy upscale of the master of oh like the digital master have, yeah Oof. that's gonna suck it's gonna be disappointing it's true no you can't see pores of boromir Yes. That should be but, a band. I mean, the pores, the pores of, of Boromir. Boromir. The, we are the pores of Boromir. Um, but what I'm what I am excited about is maybe they will actually go and find those deleted scenes and um have them released in a, in a new release. If it's going to be the same bonus materials, it's going to be very disappointing. Oh, no. Well, um, but like the 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 documentary is probably like mastered in like DVD quality, so that's not going to get upscaled. No, 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 I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about making new documentaries with stuff that oh, we don't okay. know. Because I remember watching The Hobbit behind the scenes and they had a little segment about them about the story of them having to um edit uh the montage for Cannes Film Festival and they showed the people at Cannes the entire like a huge like 18 minute trailer for all the films and they had the mountain doom thing like a year before fellowship came out you know like they showed footage from that and they were talking about how they were scoring it and there's still so much in in that story of them making those films that we don't know yet that would be really fun to see yeah okay uh what about what about b- b- sorry jacob but before we move on uh mm-hmm. The what, Hobbit. Your, what I would no, like no, is I would no, like a no, forty-eight delete. frames per second <laughs> no, version. Phil just going in. No, forty-eight uh, frames per second. No, well, That's what I want to watch. Know, but you know, there's a, there's a re-release of a of, of a higher resolution. There's always the danger of them digitally <gasps> regrading no. it. You oh, know no. this. You know this to be true. You know this. Know. They have done this guys, before. Guys, Search I'm getting anxious. Feelings. I want to try my beer. So we're gonna first do that. Oh yeah, and then, beers. And then we're gonna go to this one thing we still have to do. And then we'll finally wrap up with the king of comedy. Oh, gosh. So, uh, okay, it's true, it's who true. wants good, to go good. first with the beers? Tim, I think you have another beer, right? I do, I do, I do. I have a, from the same company. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was their name? Uh, Magic Rock Brewing. Um, it is, the name is called Common Grounds, which I think is a pun because this is a coffee porter with chocolate and vanilla. You know, Ooh, coffee grounds. Porter. Wow. <laughs> um, this one Sounds is awesome. lovely. This one is tasteful. Oh. I poured it in a cup. Great oh. foam, great color. And I do mm. taste all the flavors. Oh. I think strongest is coffee, and which is the, with the biggest fond. And then you have aftertaste of chocolate and vanilla. And it's great. Oh, that sounds nice. Ooh. Is it like a, th- is a thick porter? Nice. Body. No, it's, 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 it's not porridgey. It's actually pretty uh, liquidy. But I think with the taste it, and for the situation I'm drinking here, it, it's actually nice. You know, since great. it's a second beer. And um, the only stuff it looks like they added is uh, no, nothing. Just it's just nothing. it's just the aftertaste. So, so basically, you're saying that what's advertised is what you got. Exactly. It's it's just the roast right. has created this lovely taste. <laughs> like it's your roast in your mouth. Mm, that sounds good. So man. Good, good on you, Magic Rock Brewery, and stop with yes. the grapefruit shit. No one wants it. <laughs> <laughs> we over uh, that stuff. Yeah, yeah. What's that? My second beer is also a duo pack. I have the Garden Brewery once again, and this beer is one I wanted to try before too. When they had this like beer festival, and they were mm-hmm. 
putting out new flavors, and I want to try this one, but they didn't have it on tap. It's called a Baltic Porter. Oh, you're, you're stout and oh. portering it up? I'm pure stout and porter. Well, let's read what it says, and we'll compare it to the taste. It says, strong and sweet with an aged alcohol warmth, flavors of dark fruits, burned caramel, roasted coffee, rum, and molasses. Mm-hmm. Oh. 10.1% alcohol. This is going to be very useful. <laughs> yeah, I guess let's so. Try it. Tim, you okay. said no hobbits, and now you're singing the hobbits music. Okay, you know? but this is nice. Okay, so give, give very us some complex flavors. flavor. Is it rich so, alcohol? Can you feel, can you feel it? When it when it, it immediately hits you, you have that sort of nice body, right? Um, uh-huh. Porter feel, and then when when you swallow. It's sort of mm. some of the things they were ex- ex- explaining, like this dark fruits, some of the coffee flavor hits you, definitely some molasses, and then also the alcohol at the end, right? Cause it's <laughs> the, the alcohol. So, so, dear listeners, as we approach winter season, it is tradition, it is only natural that we, 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 tra- we shift translate. Yeah, we shift. We shift from the light summery beers into the dark. Depths of stouts and porters, and then we go <laughs> to the <laughs> Russian <laughs> imperial <laughs> stouts, <laughs> where it's so <laughs> thick <laughs> it pours like a porridge from the bottom. Like a bowl of porridge, <laughs> a porter. Exactly. A porter. Listen, <laughs> we still like have one one bit of, of business to finish here. Hey, we oi, do, we do. Oi, listen we do. up. One oi. bit of business. Oi, oi Phil, mate, listen up. Oi. <laughs> Turned into American. Listen up. <laughs> um, American bully. Phil, oh, you um, mate. We are here to discuss your progress report on the second part of your homework. That's right. <sighs> I thought you I hope you haven't forget. forgotten. No. No, um, no. But I'll make it brief because there's really... I was racking my brain. I couldn't think of anything. I probably should have looked at a list of films, but I... Probably. <laughs> All this you time just, I You just sat in a chair and then you thought of Dave Grohl. Yeah, that's exactly what I did, <laughs> to be honest. Um... But I have one, one movie. Okay, that's good. And, that's great. Um, okay, we can do one Frank, now. I know, we'll be... I know you're waiting for this. You're going to be so disappointed, Frank. No, okay. Well, look, listen, listen. Frank gets one now, and then he gets maybe a second Yeah, he'll get one. more later. Come back as, from I, Japan. as I keep thinking as I keep thinking about different movies, yeah. I, I think also the experience, we're, we're gonna, you know, the gonna experience make... in Japan will, will make you think about this. Exactly. Yeah. No, yeah. but he, we're going to print out a little piece. <laughs> we're going to take all the movies from Wikipedia and Phil's going to print it out in like a little, you know, papers A4. He's going to bind it. And on a plane to Japan, he's going to read through it. And with like a little highlighter, he's going to highlight those movies. And Frank, he's going to tell you those movies. Yes. Yeah. Because Frank. Okay. So. What a good yeah. celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So my movie is, and you won't believe this. So I was thinking, what is a movie that. I keep going back to that I'd watch again that I feel like watching again, you know, and I feel like that's kind of a thing that, uh, you, Oh God, it's going to be avatar, isn't it? No, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> and, no, uh, I'm I haven't seen that in so long. Um, we should watch it. I haven't since the cinema. M- yeah, me either. Pretty much. Um, I feel you didn't, you didn't just say their movie is avatar. No, 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 oh, no. Okay. But, uh, and this is, I don't know why we got this theme going. You know, we we watch the Joker, but I have to say that the Dark Knight is one of those. Ah, nice. I was really Makes thinking sense. about yeah. it, but for me, I just there's something about that when I watch it again, I always get ideas from it, and it just feel it, it has the wonderful pacing. It just it has that realism, but it's still fantasy. You know what I mean? It still has that grip on uh, not being a hundred percent. You know, like mm-hmm. this could actually happen, but it's. It it goes there, and it's also very uh, tense, and it has it has everything. I mean, like I just really liked I really like that movie. I watch it That's good. more often than not. Like even like yesterday, I was thinking, man, I mm-hmm. really would like to see The Dark Knight again. <laughs> okay, uh, that, that's, that's cool. That's good. That, that was what two thousand eight. Two thousand eight. Right? Yeah. So Joker I, was yeah. big. Megan Fox was hot. That's the end of the century. But I think I think Frank, listen to me. I think I have a solution for this problem. I think. Once this podcast, you know, sort of, because we are entering the new decade, 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 mm-hmm. decade, 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 and and there's a movie, ten years of movies from from two thousand, you know, ten 
to 2020, <laughs> right? Nine years of movies, sorry. Nine years of movie movies. And I think maybe, maybe, maybe we could do a special where we run down through the last nine years Best of movies. Of. Nine, and we each nine. of us can pick maybe one or two movie that from mm. each year that spoke to them. That could be an interesting special episode. Okay. What do you guys think? Special. Well, let us know. That's true. That, that that could be something. And maybe then we'll find out the true inspiration behind Phil and what 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 he's been watching for the last Oh, year. so I mean, you're I, saying that uh, what Phil, I'm saying Phil. now isn't true. No, 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 no. It, 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 is, it is valid. wrestling. It is... I've been thinking, but I just feel like this is one of those movies and it's happened to be later on. That's you know what's funny about excellent. this movie? I didn't no, like no, it it's, at the it's, beginning. It's a, it's a valid, it's a valid, it's a valid choice. And it's, 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 it's within the rules. You're right. Me personally. <laughs> yeah. I, I I was hoping for something more exotic, but that's why maybe we should do this special. Maybe we should. We should but bring Tim, up movies Tim, to wouldn't you. Wouldn't you say that this is why this is interesting that we gave Phil this homework because we're discovering very interesting things. We are. We are. It's very interesting. And, and, and the good thing is, that I think for Phil, right, this is good for you too, Phil, because then I think this is going to be useful, you know, to like set these things sort of like, you know, more solid, solidify these things. It's good. Well, for me, they are something that I'm happy with. I like them. That's you know? exactly why, why we asked. And this exactly. is why we're happy hearing these things. I have happy. an idea. I have, uh, I have the Joker that his mom called him. I have an idea, Tim, for the next homework assignment for Phil. So, <laughs> okay, okay. No, so the, no. <laughs> so the assignment is this. So this is great. This is amazing answer. This is good. This is from the 2010s. Yeah. But we need a movie. Not from, from the 2010s. In, from the 90s, right? That's the first part. And then the next one would be from the 20. Wait, no. No, the 90s we had we had just we got Jurassic Park from the 90s. Ah, we got Jurassic Park. So I guess then the homework is We got Jurassic Park, we got the Matrix. True, true. That's what's yeah. covered. So we need um, but an, maybe maybe we don't do the homework. Maybe we do this do the special and then we can we can you know okay. we can I maybe guess that's a we can find out. too. That's true. So you Phil, know. I think you've you've successfully done the homework yeah. and we appreciate you thinking and wrestling about this. And I think that this is really good. Now we have a I mean, I, I kind of knew this personally, but I didn't know. You know, the reason why we asked because we wanted to get a specific, you know, this is this and why. Yeah. It's and good. I'm happy to say this, this is because good. that's what it, to me, those are all encompassing. Those are the things that inspire me that I mm. like, that I'm very comfortable with, that I like watching again and again. And that's the, that's it. Sorry. You know, that's, you take mm -hmm. what no, you get. No that's apologies. Me. No apologies. That's no me. Apologies Sorry. the way to go, my friend. Absolutely. All right, Tommy no Wazell, calm down. All right, so anything else? Anyone have any news, bits and tits and bits? No. no. Tommy, no Tommy Wiseau is the Joker. <laughs> I didn't want to say that. I wanted to say like, like tidbits. That's what I wanted to say. But then I said tits and bits. That Imperial Porter is, yeah. is docking just, into your yes. brain station. Oh, yeah, I have just rum and coke. That's all. Oh, nice. Phil, you didn't mention oh, rum and coke. Right. Usually yeah. we're used to you having one, one room, drink. So, so, so yeah. we I just have a little didn't... rum and coke. That's all. That's nice. I like rum and coke. Very nice. Uh, so, King of Comedy. Yeah, the King of Comedy. This is a movie that I actually wanted to see before. And I'm really so glad did I. So did I. that we paired this up with um, Joker because it's perfect pairing with the and film. It, it, it wasn't... Uh, we didn't know it was inspired by this. I don't know. Right? Because... I mean, it was, based on the based on the plot, I didn't know the plot, but I knew like the premise a little bit in the movie, and I figured like, hey, that's yeah, that's I mean, sounds like it could be inspired. Yeah. Could, oh, okay. Yeah, because I just thought like, oh, it's it could be related. You know, I didn't yeah, think cause, it's because because you suggested an actual it, connection. Which is, which you know, great because I had forgotten about it entirely. But I remember. Well, when I first heard of it, I liked the idea. I liked the premise because that's for me is also kind of fascinating. You know, like yeah, the obsessed fan sort of thing. And, and and not only is it inspired, but I mean, come on, Robert De Niro plays the plays the host. Yeah, yeah, he's now the In, reverse role. Exactly. So, by the way, you didn't. Yeah, <laughs> I guess what? you're the host. So, have you decided, or you've forgotten? To tell a brief description of the movie. Oh, uh, no, I'm skipping the brief descriptions. Okay, okay. That's so, my style. Yeah. If you've seen the movie, then you'll know. If you haven't, then you'll, you're will you along for the ride. Or you can just go at IMDb <laughs> and read a little it. short Ex blurb. Exactly, exactly. Read a little blurb, read a little excerpt, but, you know. 
Okay, uh, so on my so, on my episode, uh, not doing the one for <laughs> no, you. No description. I'm so uh, what? What can we? I wanted to say. How do we approach this? Because I'm thinking like, um, I guess maybe this movie. I, I would just ask you guys, what did you think? In yeah, maybe maybe similar questions like, what did you think in watching the movie? How about, you, how about yeah? How about maybe how about how about how about how about? Tell me that. Um, did you okay? So did you guys as in your life watch late night shows? Not it, oh yeah, it's a lot. You, thank you. That's all I want to talk about. Late night shows. Thank you so much, Tim. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm deputy host. I, I, I like, I like how like, you're like you. You know, like I'm the host, and I like telling you guys I'm the host. Blah blah blah. Forget everything, and then Tim's like, maybe you should talk about this. Yes. Uh, perfect segue. So late night shows. Yes. So I have a history with that. Not as big as some people do, but I got into Conan O'Brien. Um, in okay. the late 2000s, something like that, early 2000s, where, interestingly enough, so back in the day, do you remember, guys, you guys remember Hulu? <laughs> it's Hulu that's still a thing. It's still a thing, <laughs> it's, it's still a thing but I stopped they using it, so I forgot shows. about it. I know, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> but, but I'm saying, better yet, do you remember when Hulu launched? It was a long yeah, time ago. Yeah, yeah. It was a strictly American thing. I, it was I an American thing, yeah. This. And yeah. It was 10 years ago, 10 plus years ago, and I remember it was really a cool concept because the idea was like, you can watch TV shows, um, by the episode and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. immediately, like, after they were broadcast. Uh, and my friend Drew, like, hooked me up with Hulu.com. <laughs> and I was watching stuff on Hulu. I was watching, like, The Office. I was watching this and that. And I realized, like, oh, cool. There's, like, late night shows, too. And so I would watch, actually, fairly regularly, the Conan O'Brien. Late Night with Conan O'Brien, I think, was a show back in the day. And what was interesting was that I actually caught it at a really fun time. Because I think in 2009, do you guys remember the writer strike maybe like in the States? Yeah, yes. in 2008. Yes. Like all yes. the, like a lot of normal people actually found out how much of is actually scripted. Because everyone thought like the late yes. shows and were like I, actually just ad lib and it's like, it's all written. And it was fascinating <laughs> to watch it at that time because I had just like started watching it when the writer strike was happening or started up. And it was amazing because, like, for instance, like, Conan O'Brien would, like, they would go up there and say, well, we don't have any jokes, we don't have anything, the writers are on strike, so let's just make stuff up. And they would do random <laughs> random stuff. Yeah. And I learned a lot about, like, yeah, you're right, it is scripted as a team of writers that help write late night shows and especially the monologues and stuff like that. And I really liked, actually, the Conan O'Brien stuff that I watched. And I, the reason why I liked it was the style, but also that they introduced me to some music Mm-hmm. That I also um, found cool. But anyway, that's an interesting it. part. That um, for me, I knew about um, late night shows only because of the music um, section. Right. Because that's like because I didn't I didn't live in America, so I didn't have these shows on on late night. You know, like but right. I was into rock bands and and music and and things. And then you 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 would get past these videos. You know that were ripped from these shows, like a, like a live performance, like of all these bands that I was into, and that was like that was my idea of what I thought was about. I, I had a really skewed idea of, of what those shows were about, and sometimes I would see an interview or, and stuff like that. So I just thought it was like short interview, and then bands play. <laughs> like that was yeah, my, yeah, that's yeah. what I thought was was, and I think for me, um, and still is like you have Conan O'Brien to me definitely like my favorite is David Letterman. Mm-hmm. And oh, and you know, right, right. bring it back to Dave Grohl um, to to solidify my love for <laughs> David Letterman is when he, we, he he had a heart surgery from Indiana, then, Indiana exactly Ball and, state, and, and he's just a dude, and he's like in his like sixties seventies, and he had heart surgery, and he's back, and and then he's like, oh, I'm back on the show, yay! And I'll, my favorite band is gonna play my favorite song, and it's Foo Fighters <laughs> with Everlong, and I'm like, what? <laughs> It's crazy. This old man who's like an old TV show dude, and he's like Everlong. Like that's, and that's did you crazy. Know the Foo Fighters actually canceled. I think a, a gig or something to fly. Up and to they play. didn't cancel. They they played the gig. Oh, sorry. Finished that's the that. gig and then flown over to the studio and played the song. Okay, that sounds better than canceling. Yeah. Wow, that's Interesting. crazy. But um, you said that you. Oh yeah, I wanted to actually add something that you wanted to say about the bands playing. Mm-hmm. on late night shows i remember listening to someone talk about what it's like to play as a band on a late night show 
And they said, it's nothing at all like playing an actual <laughs> live show. Oh, it's like, wait, wait, it's like, it's nothing. It doesn't exist. It's yeah, 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 yeah. They, they said, they said, um, there's like basically no warm up. There's no like chance to actually get in any sort of vibe or mode. And they're like, literally just go up there and they're like, okay, you're playing in like, you know, 10 minutes or whatever. And then they said, you just play and then mm -hmm. you're super nervous. And it's just yeah. a blur. It ends in like 20 seconds. That's what it feels yeah, like. Yeah, like because the song is like three minutes. It's like, it's crazy. And there's no, yeah. oh, that, that, yeah. And then I, like no I, audience interaction, yeah. nothing. It's like you're just in a strange bubble. So that, I found that interesting. So, so I remember what I wanted to say. You guys there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Sorry. I, I got scared. The, the connection <laughs> was lost. Um, got scared. So, so before I left to Ireland, I used to live in Serbia and maybe I was like 16, 17. And I, and I was aware of late night shows because of the concert things, right? That was my whole perception. It's right. It's bands I like will play music, right? And uh, on our local television, one of the TVs in, in Serbia was like this big advertisement, Serbia's first late night show with whatever. <sighs> oh, some, really? Some guy each, right? And it's like, oh, special guests and everything. And I was like, oh my goodness, we're going to have our own thing. And I was aware of a lot of like rock bands and all kinds of like local stuff. And I was like, oh, we're going to have our own thing. And I was like, I was so excited, you know? Really? So, so it's going to premiere. Huh. Blah, 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 blah. No way. So I'm, so I'm hyped. I'm everything like, who's going to play and everything. <laughs> and uh, premiere night comes out and uh, starts the show. And, and the disappointment is, was, was, was very strong because wow. first of all, no local bands playing. They just have a house band, which is <laughs> like some dude on a guitar and the drummer and someone on the piano and this lady singing and they just like sing cover songs and they just keep singing all the time. And this goes back mm. to them. And the host, so you know, like in, in, in American late night shows, it's like a 12 minute interview, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a little bit of joke, a little bit of promotion of the, whatever they're working on. And it's like a yeah. little bit of getting to know you. Yeah. This dude's show was four hours. Whoa. What? Okay. So, so he brings out a guest and for an hour and a half, they're talking. Wow. The good old days when they used to know each other. Like, this is like a podcast. I, I'm not serious. <laughs> so bad. And I'm just watching and I'm like, and they're talking about, oh, back in the 1984, remember this party we went to? And I was like, oh, this Nikola oh, guy. And, this. No. and they're just talking. And I'm like, okay, I guess this is it. And it's like, let's, like, after an hour and a half, let's break out our second guest. And it's like some other old ass man I've never seen in my entire life. <laughs> and then like, this it's dude comes amazing. up and they all three of them start like talking. And then and the lady singer, she joins them and they're all talking. I'm oh, like, that's amazing. what is this terrible shit? This is not <laughs> what I wanted. <laughs> but you I know, know Tim, I, I think yeah. that like, for instance, the, the Balkan night, ways. The, the that's what I'm saying. Balkan the, the Balkan ways are very different. Like, cause I think the late night show phenomenon is a very American thing. Well, not necessarily. I mean, there are British shows that are similar, right? But but the British there's some that are different. even better, you know, like Grammy. But Orbiter. they know yeah, when awesome. to stop. Unlike us in our podcast, it's been two hours <laughs> already, guys. <laughs> well, well, it's true. I'm the host. It's a podcast. I was I was gonna do like an hour and a half and two hours, but now it's too late. Uh, <laughs> <I want> to, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> we have tipped over. There's no, there's no to, the Baltic border is is you know is yeah, okay. doing interesting things to me. Um, no, what I wanted to say was that, uh, that I think the, yeah, the more Eastern European, like style talk shows, in my opinion, are very boring and they tend to be like, you know, just like, let's talk about politics. Anyway, I don't know There's what I'm talking just, about. Uh, it's, it's no, but it's like, <coughs> but it's like the same thing. Like, you know, like the voice, the, the TV yeah. show American, right? And it's like, it's always edited out and it's, it's super quick. And it, and it, and even though whatever, who cares about talent shows, whatever, you can have your opinion, but it's like, at least it's like compact, you know? Right. And then like, I watched like the Serbian version of that and like, like, you know, like in, in, in this is everything most of the time, there. dude, the judges talk for like 10 minutes. I it's, think it's not. Dude, they're Tim, like they're, Tim. I'm wondering, maybe Serbian TV is specific because let's say, for instance, like yeah, like Croatian TV seems to be like much tighter than that. I think with like the editing and stuff. <laughs> I don't know. The, the more Balkan, the, the worse it is. Because I remember <laughs> maybe the, longer, the longer it's like they, there's no editing. It's just like <laughs> yeah, there's no editing. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like and also they're super opinionated. Like it's like you usually go like if you like some one of these talent shows, it's like 
it's like, okay, this was terrible, blah, 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 blah. Or it's like, oh, this is amazing, right? And it's like, you watch the stupid Balkan thing and it's like, this was amazing. But if it were me, I would do this and that. Or you I would know, wear a shorter skirt. Or I would sing like this. It's like, right. who gives a shit so about your opinion? It's interesting that you're saying this because it just reminds me of like, maybe that is a Serbian TV thing because remember... Back in the day, we used to come over and we'd like watch like that pink TV channel. By the way, all of this was on the pink. The the talk (laughs) show was on the pink. Of course, course it would be on pink TV. um, There was like they would. There was this really interesting thing. It's like I never saw this in my life. Where it's like they would show a movie, right? Let's say it's like two hours, and then they would have this half an hour block (laughs) where they just dump all the commercials, right? And then and then which is actually actually a pretty good idea if you ask me because it's like. Take a break, go to the bathroom, blah, 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 finish the movie in peace. But it's interesting yeah. because maybe that's similar to the thing you're talking about, where it's like just, just long. Every, just everything's in excess. <laughs> that's interesting. Anyway, yeah, so King of Comedy. Yeah, finally. Come on. <laughs> Jerry, okay, okay. Jerry, I'm getting come there, on. I'm getting there. Listen, listen. I think I'm going to go super basic on this because I feel like it's all a new movie for us and stuff like that. So I started with Tim last time, so I start with Phil now. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. Phil, give me your like general impressions of the movie. Sort of like, like what did you find most intriguing about the King of Comedy, and was it a movie that you were interested in watching? Absolutely, I've been wanting to watch this movie for a while now. Um, it's interesting that um, the you know Joker movie came out, and then I'm like, it's like uh, you know people start talking about how it's similar to King of Comedy. I'm like, I wanted to see that movie. It has Jerry Lewis in it, and so I decided to watch it. it well, I mean, <laughs> I was <laughs> required to watch it so we could do, talk about this podcast, and I did yesterday. So we could talk about this podcast. Interesting. On, <laughs> So we could talk about it on oh, this podcast. It's our and I did yesterday. We talk about our old and podcast. Was, I did yesterday. Yes. And um, here's what I love about it. I love that it's about this obsessive guy who lives with his mother, and it's he's he's played by Robert De Niro, and um, it it shows you how far someone can go just because they want to be famous, because they wanna they want to do something with the life. And um, <laughs> what he turned Boston for a second? There? He turned, you know, he turned into something. Rupert. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah, and, pumpkin. And, you, and, and it just shows how um, it people can be crazy. And it's a really scary kind of movie when you watch it like that. Did but you enjoy the film? I definitely enjoyed the film. Was there anything... It just shows, you... shows something about the scary, um, like, a, you know, like, what happens if you don't care about anything except reaching a goal when... I don't know what I'm talking about. Those anymore. people scare me. It's like cool. I don't know. It's I don't cool. know yeah. if you have the same impression, but I, I'm I, like I'm a really laid back person, and it's something that I developed as a teenager that has halted me in my life, the way I live, and I definitely want to improve and be more of a go getter. But I'm seriously scared of like hustlers and people who just be driven by a thought, the like their goal. Mm-hmm. I'm just like it's 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 fright <laughs> it's frightening mm-hmm. to me i don't know it's just like it's like it's like a person like they they can't they can't stop but it's like i i know like pumpkins is different you know and it, it, it a little bit special in a way but it's like this is like just just it's crazy and and it's it's crazy that this movie it's like oh it's like a fun you know back in the day comedy of of a character uh well, I don't kind of so. study and then halfway through the movie it turns into a tarantino movie no, I, I would. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's a fun, back in the day fun character movie. It, it's, it, okay, so here's what I wanted to ask: is that okay? So, so maybe as far as seventy cinema in America, it's it's really real. It's uncomfortable. You know, uh, h- the way he interacts with people, it's very uncomfortable. And I think back in the day, it might have been m- kind of stronger impact. But I wanted to compared to like you watch something you know how cinema has moved on from 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 then and and you watch something like the joker even though that's a mainstream movie i i think what i want to know your impression especially phil because since you watched them you know you watched uh king comedy afterwards like what's the what's the difference do do you feel like like maybe the old one could have gone a little bit further or or do you think the way it was made it was it's it's enough like it's it's a good movie the way it was made is enough it's okay perfect the way it is because it feels to me like what i love about this is that it doesn't show anything striking anything brutal on screen cuz you could make it like that and you could make it 
you know, like a lot more yeah. violence, like, like, uh, like misery, you know, that movie, that's a very similar kind of, yeah, 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 yeah. Thing. it's a movie about a obsessed fan of a guy who's a writer and she kidnaps him and, <laughs> and ties him to a bed and forces yes. him to write the sequel to the book that she likes okay. from him. Similar. Spoilers, yeah. she breaks his legs. <laughs> oh boy. So it's it's like that, right? So you could make it like this, but this movie isn't doing that. Like on on the surface, you're watching it; it's it feels normal. But the reason why it's scary is because of the actions and decisions and the way a character acts, and that's it. You know what I mean? And how I, I, I agree with you. Obsessed Phil, he is. I definitely agree with you. I think that the movie, as is, did exactly what it wanted to do, and did it very well. I wanted to say that um, it's interesting that the movie. Uh, uh, you know that scene at the beginning of the film where Rupert is like mm. he's he's snatching Jerry Lewis's character to talk to him, right? Yeah, yeah. The this whole is what stage we were talking thing about with help him helping. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. We were saying, you know, like it's it's fascinating because like this character, Rupert Pumpkin, right? It's like he's an example of what like sort of what can it's like a almost like a cautionary tale of like what can happen when you are living in your head for so long yeah. and when you aren't actually doing anything and then all you're fixating on is like, if I just meet this guy, you know, if I meet the guy, you know, I'm admiring so much and I want to be like, I can just, it's my one shot, you know? And that's like totally what, I, what we were talking about earlier. <laughs> like that's the, that's yeah. the opposite of how those things, you know, work. And so I do- love the way they play that out where it's like, he's, adamant in like just, yeah. if you just see the tape if you just see me you know then, then you can do everything and I'll be and you know the parallels were very similar like remember they had those ap- scenes of imagination where you have him imagining God, that was so good you yeah know, just saying you're so, how do you do it you're so good you know and, and then like, his, oh man with the principal coach, his principal yeah the principal yes, comes yes. in and then we're gonna wedge you in, in on TV and stuff, yes. and it's like, oh, but that's that so was so true, right? ridiculous. It was like we were talking so, about the imagination going wild. Yeah, of like, yeah. You know, yeah. They did but, it but the super funny well. thing is that you know you look at the Joker, like he was actually better about it. He he did stand up comedy while Pumpkins never he never did comedy. He just was like, I I show that he. he this guy is gonna hire me on the TV show, and right, and he's gonna love it. Like there's that scene where he's like. Where I was confused about, I thought it was going to be the actual truth, like in the future when he's asking him to take over the show. I thought for a second that was like a, you know, like a Tarantino kind of thing when you kind of move way to the future. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now he's yeah. famous. But that was just another imagination. Yeah. Scene. Yeah. Yeah. No, but I think the difference, though, with the Joker, I wanted to say, was that uh, you said that he was doing comedy. Mm-hmm. I mean, kind of. He was writing jokes, but remember, but he did stand up routine runs. Remember, he he did once, but I wanted to say that was post. Remember, like when he sort of, like we talked about, when he like had a change of direction, and you know, he went basically kind of wild and stuff like that. But it's true, he, he was like happy about his yeah. But he but he did at least did it, like you know. This, yeah, this guy, but, did, he just like went straight into right. extremism when he got but rejected. I, I, actually, I actually love that like parallel because it, it just, you know, it's, it's very realistic in a sense. And it's, it can be, you can take it as, as a sad thing or, or a positive thing. But it's that sort of me- message that like you don't know what it's like to do something until you mm-hmm. do it. Right. And that changes your pers- perspective entirely. Whereas, yeah. so for instance, like this Rupert Pumpkin character... Or is it, what's Pupkin. his last name? Pupkin, P-U-I, P-U-P-K-I-N. Yeah. For instance, Pupkin. he's, People he's you know, a, it. a case of a person who's just dreaming of doing something, <laughs> but he's never, ever, ever taken the step of just trying it, you know? Yeah. I mean, he, he does prepare material. Did. did you see his stand-up at the end? It was killer. Yes, yes, <laughs> I know, I know, Phil, I know. At the end, yeah, he has a stand-up. He actually does okay, you know, like, it's not uh, bad. That's, that's, I really wanted to ask about, like, because that, that did nothing for me. That was, like... It was lame. His, his oh, okay, okay. We'll, we'll get to that really sick, really quick. Yeah. Really sick. But I just wanted to say that... <laughs> really sick. I'm really sick. I just wanted to say that, like, to me, in a sense, both these mm-hmm. movies had this element of if you want to do something or try to do something, like, mm-hmm. waiting for the perfect opportunity is so wrong on so many levels because you have no clue what it's like to actually do that. And when you do that and try it, your perspective will change 
anyway and shift entirely because you realize the experience of actually doing it is totally different than what it is in your head. Exactly. And and then even 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 Jerry Lewis tells him that. It's like like what what do you think? You know, like yes, there's talented people, but the experience you have of years in doing it, it's it that's what you need to go through it. Maybe you're talented, but you're not yeah. going to be able to cope with it and you're just like you're not getting it, you know. It's right. like that's I'm not yeah. here because of some freak accident. Maybe it started me here, but you know, it's the years of right. the grind. Right. So that that's what I found interesting. So you were saying something you wanted to ask about the comedy at the end? No, no, but uh, sure, whatever. But uh, what I want, what I really wanted to ask you is, guys, is that the first, <laughs> just just the way of how how tenacious he is and everything, and he gets in these really uncomfortable situations at the first half of of the movie, especially with his girlfriend. And it's like, and and I wanted to ask you guys, how were you handling the cringe, cringe factor? Because I was okay with everything up until the point when they go to his house. Oh, yes, man, yes, absolutely. yes. That's the best part. Same thing. And I was just sinking in my chair. I was like, I was too, <laughs> man. I was just like, well, I was watching. It's funny yeah. because I was watching the movie at home, but I was like, you know, and alone. But I was thinking, like, man, like I, I just kind of want this to end. Like, <laughs> and like, like I can't, I can't watch. And it, and it was just like. It was, yeah. It was, it was just too much. And that poor lady, and she's apologizing, and 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 Jerry Lou is just standing there, so, like, "You're an idiot. I, I can't just get out, please." And he's like, "Oh, we'll go call some friends, and it, it, it'll be fine." Oh, it's so interesting because it's like it's not like it's not like insanity. It's, it's not, you know. But it's just like it's a person who can't even understand, you know, the cues. And well, it's not that, but I mean, he, he genuinely, didn't he genuinely think that something that he imagined he was supposed yes. to be there? Yes. Sort of yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the question. That. Is, is he was just completely ignorant or he was just socially unaware or? Uh, what, I, th- I think I watched something on YouTube, which was interesting, mm-hmm. kind of talking about the movie where basically Rupert Pupkin is so, like I told you about, he's so much in his head imagining mm-hmm. these things and sort of wanting to get this without actually doing it, that he... The, the 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 sort of the idea behind the movie, and I think it's true, is like that his imagination is so strong that it blends in with reality. He can't distinguish reality hmm. from the things he wants, from the imagination that he has. And also a driven man, he's a hustler. He knows yeah. you have to do the hard work. It's just the hard work he's doing is just the wrong <laughs> way about it. Because exactly. he's, yeah. he's very adamant. He's like, he, you know, he... He's not like he's lazy or he's just expecting somebody Mm -hmm. to knock on his door. He's actually, you know, he's chasing the dream. It's just... Right, but instead of like doing the And then he kidnaps the dream. But that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's just such a... Like, okay, then he's at his house and it's like, okay, this is not working. Okay, so the only solution is to kidnap him. Yeah. (laughs) And be on TV at least once. Like, it's (laughs) it's such a crazy yet rational... Like, he's fully aware that he's done, you know? Like, that's his... Last hurrah! Like he even says it, and like when he's talking to the FBI guys, like I got to do this. It's there's no other way. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't. I don't think he had dreams of becoming a celebrity. Of as he was fully aware, he's going to get arrested, and that's it for him. Yeah, which was very, yeah. you know, mindful. Like he was, you know, he's he's aware of it, which is weird. Yeah, I, I like how you, yeah. Robert De Niro performed this. This is great. Oh man! So it was Definitely really good because he does these movies. Because he's not. He's not like. You know, it's not like just one angle. It's like, oh, he's he's you know he's ch- charming. You know what I mean? He's like normal, he's a real but, person. But his and actions also, are yeah. so horrible. You know, you know what I mean? Like it's just <laughs> yeah. so cringy. Did yeah. he was he? He, he looks like of, you know what he looks like to me. He looks like Mike Staclasa. <laughs> <in this place. laughs> that's, that's 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 totally not because I was gonna say his suit kept remind me of Pee Wee Herman for some reason because it was oh, gray yeah. with like red details and I was just wondering if that was intentional well, or not or was Pee Wee Herman that was after right that's a great suit I was haircut, watching a great panel mustache with uh, Robert De Niro and Rob... <sighs> Martin, Scorsese Martin Scorsese and Jerry Lewis yes oh I watched too, the same Phil. thing yesterday uh, <laughs> oh, did, did, you guys, the whole did you guys catch the Martin Scorsese cameo Phil yeah yeah I did I did yeah, good, good, good. Anyway, once <laughs> at, the, at the panel, they were saying that the inspiration for the costume was that they were walking around, I think, and they found in a window shop, they just saw this mannequin and it had the same mm-hmm. hair, it had maybe the mustache and the and the suit, and they're like, <laughs> like that's that's him. And they're like, that's, that's him. him. It's perfect. So that that it's might perfect. answer your question. 
And uh, uh, I wanted to say, yeah. I wanted to ask you guys a question um, about the. It's not necessarily super important, but it's just interesting. Like the finale, right? So after he shows the video, after he's on TV, yeah. after he gets arrested. And his mediocre jokes. <laughs> his mediocre That's what I liked the best. Because for me, it was like mediocre, you know? Yes, exactly. Yeah, I was going to say, there was nothing special. It was just like, it wasn't like, oh, he's actually talented. It was just like, eh. And it wasn't bad either. Like, it wasn't horrible. It was like, Yeah, it wasn't, it okay. wasn't like the... It wasn't Joker level, like, you know. Right. But, but no, but those are funny because they were black humor. <laughs> But even the Joker I guess. stuff I don't think was super funny in my opinion The Joker but, was a bit, a bit weird because he wasn't like He wasn't really in my opinion He wasn't like a super good It was sort of sad because he wasn't really a great comedian But, oh. but he, 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 had was, a, he had a dark sense of humor, you know Right it, it, It's not a, he's not a jokey guy which, which, is, which, is, which is weird about Pupkin um, the yeah. Well, you're asking about the finale. Like, like why does it have way. an ending? Yeah, why does it have an ending like that? Since his jokes were media, like, no, is no, it because no, of the no, stunt? No, 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 not not that. No, no, no. I want to say post that when they show six years later the biography. Yeah, yeah, stuff. yeah, that. That, that's what I'm talking about. He gets arrested, but he gets off early, and I I didn't like that. I didn't like it, and 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 I think maybe because. There's 40 years of cinema after that. And I don't know if this was a... I, I, this is just my opinion. I have a feeling that this was an ending that was not common in that time. To have the weirdo bad guy have a happy ending. I think people were not used to it. I think that was tw a twist kind of ending for that era. But I think after that, that was used so many times and it became such a common trope that me watching this and... 2019 was really wishing that wouldn't be ending because but it don't felt you think that could me. be just something that he imagined too yeah yes. that's another thing but, but that's part of it i think that's that's even part of it. it's like oh is it is it a cultural you know a cultural a paradox commentary commentary that oh we live in this crazy world where a criminal can kidnap a thing, but it's entertainment. So entertainment, he, right, right, he's right. successful because of that. Isn't that crazy? The world we live in. That's one mm -hmm. part where it's like, it's all in his head. You make up your mind. Is it the crazy? You know, like it. True. And, and true. It's, it's not. And, and this is not a commentary of the movie. I think that was interesting for that part. I think it's just the way of uh, the, the, so many movies we watched that did the same thing mm -hmm. that it feel that it falls flat. Which is interesting, right. I think. You know, that yeah. something that could have been authentic then feels, ugh, to yeah. me at least, personal. What, do you, what about you guys? What did you think of it? I um, thought it was good. I liked it. I, I actually think, like, I'm a little bit on the fence in terms of, like, yeah, maybe it was a bit uh, not necessary, but I actually kind of liked it. And, but I put it in more in the context of the time it was made in. I feel like that was an interesting ending to put in because I feel like, they could have just went the classic route where it feels almost like a tragedy, you know, where it ends, gets arrested, done. Yeah. Right. But this way it feels like, oh, okay, that's kind of, that's kind of interesting. So it's like, you get that final kind of like, uh, what's that called, Phil? Epilogue? Something like that. Which is Dang nice. Because, uh, yeah, because a lot of movies, I think, especially older films, they, they don't like those those epilogues and i think they don't like this end it's yeah. end and it's, i, I Man, think you that gotta, was, was if nice. you watch movies like from the 30s and 40s and those things just end immediately they're, done. they're like they're like <laughs> out and the best yeah. part is if they were made before the credits were at the end and the credits were beginning it just ends and it's it and you're like yeah, you're then, just then, then, end. Da, da, da. and, and like you don't have time to process oh, the movie yeah, yeah yeah and and i think i think don't quote me on this, but I might get my film history wrong, but that's where they put the trailers at the end. Mm. What? That's why they're called trailers. Oh. Because they're like a trailer. Because they trail at the end. That, that, that's like, horrible. I guess, I guess that gives them a little bit more ending than just abruptly ending. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, I but yeah, or, but I know that originally so. trailers were at the end of a film. Mm-hmm. I guess, and then they figure out that people won't watch them because they'll just leave. So they're like, yeah, because yeah, put them but somewhere where they have to watch them. If anyone didn't know that, now you know. Now you know. Now it's <laughs> every day. I wanted to ask trivia with Philip. God. Hmm. Um, I just want to say, 
a, a, a praise to the lady playing his crazy friend. She was mm-hmm. amazing. Oh, she was great. She, she was, was great. batshit crazy, and I believe Sandra her. Bernhardt. And I want to say crazy. that the tone of her voice, the way she yes. uttered her sentences, really reminded me of Audrey Plaza. And I'm wondering. Uh, oh, really? Because there's Audrey this. There's Plaza? this yeah. Uh, did I say Audrey? Poop, uh-huh. Sorry, Audrey Plaza. There's this movie that was came out two years ago. It's um, with her and the um, what's her face? She plays uh, Scarlet Witch in the MCU. She's the Olsen. K- Olsen. Katie Olsen. I don't know which no. Olsen. Mary she's Kate like the, Ashley and no, she's she's not the twins. She's Elizabeth like the, Olsen. Elizabeth Olsen. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's, I had and, to go through the, all the old stuff. And it's 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 a very similar theme theme is that um Arby Plaza is like a really crazy fan following this Instagram influencer played by the Olsen lady. And uh, <laughs> she's Elizabeth super Elizabeth Olsen. Elizabeth Olsen and she's super like into her and she's crazy and then she basically like kind of like fakes that she's like celebrity and she goes all the way to LA and tries oh, to get in her of life and everything. And the way she plays her, like the intonation of the way she talks really reminded me of this chick like this. Mm. Da, 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 da. So yeah, that's just an interesting fact. That's a cool movie. I don't know, to like, me, she just felt yeah. like a New Yorker. She just felt like well, she was from the from you know from the big city. So, so rich, also, crazy lady. <laughs> also, one of my favorite aspects about the movie was this like how of this portrayal of people talking about other people they really haven't even like met almost, you know, like this oh, yes. Republican guy is like, he's talking to this girl. He's like, he's like, Oh, I'm friends. It's like, we're going to get this set up and stuff like that. <laughs> it just is so, it's so fascinating because it's so like detached. From yeah. Anything, yeah. Yeah. You know, like, and like they, you know, they kidnap Jerry and they, and, and then they put the red sweater on him. He looks fabulous in this. Yeah. <laughs> Remember yeah, she, was, yeah. she was like uh, with the sleeves. Yeah. I like yeah. that, you know, the, and and it's a good thing that we in, in modern cinema we try to look into you know childhood try to explain things that you know that came with like evolving of psychology and of analysis yeah, and everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you know with like uh, the Joker, it's oh you know he, he was a child and maybe his mother abused him or it's not who knows. But it's it's a thing here in this like there's there's no background into this character. He's just no, the way no. it is. It's like yeah, that's it. That, they're both yeah. crazy, both of them, and that's the situation. That's what well, the, the story is, like, is about. They, like, sure, they're both crazy, but I think let's say like Rupert. I don't want to say he's like less crazy, but he's... oh, definitely is. He's much more capable. Like she was, yes. <laughs> she yes. was just she's talking. Just, like, like, yeah, <laughs> she was just no, talking. Jerry Lewis. He, he he is sort of like okay. I would say he's sort of crazy, but I think he just chooses the wrong route. Like we were talking about. Like his route is like he keeps fixating on this idea of this big break, right, or something like that. And so he thinks like, yeah. if I just get this guy who who's the best, and he'll he'll just give me the keys to being yeah. a comedian. And it's like. No, that's not how it works. But he's so fixed on this that it's interesting because towards the end of the movie, it, uh, he almost feels like sorry for kind of doing this to him, to Jerry. Yeah. But but he's, but he's like, like I have to do. I have, like, to, do I have to do it. He's like I have yeah. to. Do it. It's like that's the only way to, for me to get up there and do the <laughs> comedy. And you know, so he's like, she's I think like totally crazy. But, but he's you know. <laughs> It's just weird. It, I think they did a good job of like sort of exploring a lot of that. That's it's a great movie. They did a good job. Yeah. It's funny I like that I, I also there was no movie... score. There was no like music. Oh, music. true. Yeah, it's you true. That? Yeah, I thought yeah. this movie was something completely different. I thought it was like a life story of some comedian and how he rose from no. the from the rags to the riches. I, that's what I thought this movie was about. No, by the you, way, you know what's funny about this? I saw one screenshot and it had subtitle, and it was where. You know, his girlfriend's asking to get mm-hmm. out of their house. And he's like, no, no, no. And that's all. And I'm like, oh, I want to see this movie. I, think <laughs> I, I, yeah. I heard about this from Kermode, I think, from, in a reference mm-hmm. on a podcast ages ago where he was saying, like, the King of Comedy, where Robert De Niro plays a man who sits in his basement and pretends to host a talk show. And oh, he like, does. He has cut- was, cardboard cutouts. I was like, oh, I was like, yeah, this sounds really fascinating. What is this about? I'm, I'm definitely going to watch this. Well, now you did. Now we did. Now we all did. And here we are. And here we it are. It's a good so, movie to compare to, I think. I think honestly, this movie was a these two were great companion films. I think they worked out amazing. In my yeah. I, I think I think we might be figuring this format out. <laughs> we might little, be little, by out. little little by little. Yeah. Little yeah. by Do little. You know, Tim, I had one of an an idea I had was like, what if we did this? Like instead of comparing like 
uh, a new movie, an old movie, mm-hmm. what if we compare like a movie and a movie that was that inspired the movie that came mm-hmm. out? Might be interesting to think about. Yeah, I mean, this is it's it's all open in the this, format. This, this works, you know. Like, yeah. Since I noticed that the parallels, they, there's. A I lot know, of Jim. Stuff how here. about this? What? You what? do that. Tim does his own way, and I do my lunatic version where I just pick Batman Forever instead. And then you're like, oh, Uma Thurman played in this movie, so I'm gonna put. Uh, <laughs> how about yeah. no, Philip? No, no you, you get nothing. You, you... Okay, so I think we covered everything just we wanted to cover. Batman this episode movie is going uh, way overboard, but I had my Baltic Porter, so that's why that happened. Um, any anything you want to mention at the end of the episode or no? Mm, no, um. Check us out on Instagram. Yeah, uh, I want to yeah. Hear check what us you out on of Instagram, movies. please. Hit Go us up. Um, talk to, watch to King us. Of Comedy. I'm not happen. gonna be yeah, here true. next episode. That's gonna be That's interesting. True. Phil's gone. We have to get someone else. Tim, will handling this maybe? It there. We we there's there's talks. I mean, there's um, talks. <laughs> we're, in talk, we're, we're in talks. We're in talks with some with some people. Um, cool. Negotiations. So yeah, but, are but Phil's not gonna be way. here, which is interesting. It's yeah. gonna be fun. Guys. I mean, if all else fails, just me and Tim hijacking talking about spoon bending. So we'll find out. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> Five hours of spoon bending. Um, Phil, have, have a great time in Japan. That's true. Have a great I time. I hope you go to the gardens where the deer bow down to you and then you feed them. Oh, uh, yes. yes, in Nara. Um, I think that's on the way back. So I think I could do that. Um, asshole you do, some, do some vlogging, some, some <laughs> low key vlogging. You know, do some yeah, yeah. Give us, uh, hopefully, we'll have some story time. Uh, hey, when you come oh, back, yeah. you could also maybe record us a little clip of like you know maybe like a phone call or something. We'll include it in the next episode. Yeah, you know? I'll be. Um, I'll go to the Toho Cinema, and the Toho Cinema has a giant Godzilla behind please, it. So. Please and that. please do mention, even though they understand English, to anyone you meet about our podcast. That's true. <laughs> I think okay. I looked at I looked at the stats, and not a lot of coming from Japan. So I think it's your duty. <laughs> I think it's time for growth uh, in Japan. Yes, All right. we see I it think, as a potential market. I think I have right. a feeling we're going to be big in Japan. So true, true. <laughs> anyway, so uh, just on a final okay. note, thank you for listening, everyone who has been. I mean, if you made it through this Oops. episode, I mean, honestly, I mean, I think we'll probably like, send you something, right? It's That'd true. Be amazing. Um, we need to do well. Up. With Christmas is uh, coming, mm, there might be something, something Some in the crazies. works. Well, let, let's say we're in negotiations with <laughs> the partners <laughs> with the Christmas yes. people. Yes, Santa and the elves. The Christmas we, people, we've been in talks. and uh, The elf looking, lawyers looking are, are, are tough to, to uh, you know. To persuade. Um, yeah. So thanks ways. for listening and uh, hit us up on Instagram. Hey, yeah. We're, or on exactly. the usual places, iTunes, stuff like that, right? You know the drill. Uh, yeah. Do we have, we have an outro song? I think it's playing now, the outro song, right? It's always playing. It's not the Batman song. It's the other one. <laughs> okay, everyone. See All you right. In two weeks. Bye bye. Woo-hoo. Bye. How are we gonna change something? I'm gonna I'm gonna ask people questions instead of talking about yes. something. I looked like Jake so, did the same thing. I'm, I'm also so happy. I'm so happy that we didn't say I like this, I like that. <laughs> no. Okay. So um Is that a jab at me? Phil. No, no, no. <laughs> Phil. Come <laughs> on, man. Hi Jacob. You sound good. I've I've connected my bonbons. Oh okay. Okay. the bonbons are going. No, it's okay. Don't worry. I have many bonbons. <laughs> Much bonbons we'll have. In many different right. colors. <laughs> okay, should, we, should we do another, <laughs> another cue? Yes, you, please. You start, start from beginning. Like, do another cue and start from beginning where you wanted to. Because I, okay, okay, well, I'm going gonna, gonna to scrap that because it's a boring story. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, I'll continue. Hello. All right. Yeah. Clap sync, um, clap sync. All right, 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 right. Three, 
two, one, clap. <laughs>